What's going on, everybody? Welcome, welcome, welcome. We got a little special edition going on today. Uh, today, we're going to be reviewing the conversation that I had with Ali Dawa and his crew, uh, Musa Adnan and the other, the other fellow. Uh, we talked about is Jesus a Muslim? And who better than to have uh, with me on this little review here then my partner in crime on this subject, the Dizzle himself. Now he's out there sending links, so he'll he'll address us when he's ready. But man, so come on in, guys. Make sure you guys are hitting the like button. Make sure you guys are sharing the live. Hop up in here. Uh, oh man, it's late for you. It's two forty eight a.m. over here. Wow. Go ahead and let me know where you guys are watching from, man. Let me know where you guys are watching from. This was this was actually. Um, it, obviously, it was a lopsided discussion as far as the amount of time a, a, a particular side was allowed to speak. Obviously, they had three guys with mics and it was just me and it's their show. They're doing a donation show. So I'm not going to be given that much time to speak. But, you know, it, it, it was cool. Uh, they kept it respectful. Uh, Ali Dawa, actually, surprisingly, to my surprise, he... He kept it respectful and even jumped in to say, okay, let's let's hear what he has to say when, uh, you know, I was kind of, you know, they wouldn't really let me talk or whatever. But so shout out to Ali Dawa for, for that decorum. That was nice. Yeah. Hey, uh, did, yeah, did he have, uh, hey, did he have uh, his buddy smiles to Jenna uh, feeding him dangling grapes in his mouth while he was de <laughs> debating him? Not this time. Not this time. This time, though. Oh, he wasn't around. Time, he wasn't around. Yeah. He, he, you he know what we're talking was, about, right? He was, yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> like I, I had assumed when I saw when I saw the uh, when I saw the the video of him and the apostate prophet and someone's someone's dangling these grapes in his mouth while he um, um, um. I assumed I mean I assumed it was his wife and that his wife had just you know had some some sturdy hands on her and stuff like that but no nope, people uh, showed later on that that that, that outfit was <laughs> the property of his buddy um smiles to jenna and mm -hmm. my goodness that means these guys got some weird fetishes dude some weird yes. weird fetishes so yeah. hey ollie doa i got an idea i would like to be dangling things in your mouth during the live stream with debate and ollie Dawa. oh that was a great idea yeah anyway <laughs> some creepy dude i'm just i'm just saying if this was if this was one thing that would be that would be you know if it were one thing we oh could God. let it slide, but when we get all these messages from Muhammad Ajab about golden showers, golden showers, and then him talking about, you know, Western women who criticize Islam are, are actually fantasizing about being uh, captured and it's taken too as, uh, as, it's, it's, as, sex, it's too as sex slaves. Uh -huh. Yeah. And then you've got, uh, they, I mean, all, who, which, which of them isn't uh, avidly promoting child marriage nowadays? Mm -hmm. Ali Dawa saying he would tell his own nine-year-old daughter that she's ready to get married. Um, this is, mm. this is some, this is some wild stuff. Uh, uh, Daniel, Daniel Hakikachu saying, Hey, it doesn't matter if she's an 11 month old baby. Wait, he said that? Get, well, he said, he said five as if there are signs that the girl is, uh, has reached mature. Keep in mind, the Quran doesn't even require that. The Muslim sources don't even require that as right. horrifyingly evil as he sounds when he says you can have sex with a five-year-old girl who begins yeah. to exhibit some signs of maturity. Um, he's still better than his sources, which don't require you to wait for that. Wow. Um, but so, so he was debating inspiring philosophy and inspiring philosophy said, uh, have you heard of precocious puberty? Meaning people who have a medical condition, they, they reach puberty early. And Daniel had, and he says, so what if a girl has signs of maturity, meaning she gets precocious puberty at five years old? Mm -hmm. And he says, yes, if there are signs, of course you can have sex with her. And, uh, and inspiring philosophy said, what if she's four? And he said, yes, if there are signs. And then he said, what if she's three? And Daniel says, well, this would be biologically impossible. And inspiring philosophy said, uh, no, I have studies that show that some girls get uh, precocious puberty as early as 11 months old. In other words, they have a medical condition. They go through puberty when they're, when they're still babies, 11 months yeah. old. Yeah. Um, and Daniel's only response, because he had laid, he, he, that meets all his requirements for having sex with someone. And so his response there is, yeah, but I, I don't think the parents would allow that. And so that's the condition that it, an 11 month old baby who reaches precocious puberty wow. would meet all of his requirements 
for someone for a, a potential wife and sexual partner, but he doesn't think parents would allow it. So if you had parental consent, though, you'd be good to go. Anyway, the point was, these are the guys we're dealing with. And so it's no surprise when you got uh, Smiles to Jenna dangling the dangling the grapes, graping, uh, graping Ali Dawa during a live stream. And, uh, and and this all, you know, all this stuff goes, all this freaky stuff goes back to Muhammad yeah. when he's pulling up his shirt. Oh, yeah. Kiss me. Kiss me. Oh, kiss my what I want. It's what I kiss want. It. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's what I, I want. Bet, <laughs> I bet these Dawa guys like reenact this stuff. Anyway. <laughs> wow. Well, we got this going on, guys. Um, it's a little too frequent uh, that the weird stuff, get, you know, pops off with these guys. But, <laughs> but uh you, you see, know. Allah <laughs> has spoken. <laughs> That's Jabril. Jabril trying to distract us here, man. <laughs> I don't think that's a coincidence either, man. It's tough. But okay, so we're gonna go ahead and jump right into this to this video. And I actually cannot wait to see what David has to say. So hey, tell me when to stop when you want me to stop. I got some some points that I want that I think are you know may stand out, but I tell me when to when to stop and let's see how this goes. All right. It's not even that long. It's only about 30, 35 minute conversation. All right. So here we go, guys. And let's get this started. Hey, oh, this? hey, look, hey, look, gonna... this is this is the before and after Ramadan picture right here. Yes. Before <laughs> and after Ramadan, bro. With these two toothpicks. To each other. <laughs> Have you ever met him, uh, Musa? Uh no, who? What's uh, his name? Musa what? Musa Adnan. That's Rashid Adnan's son. I learned. Oh really? Mm hmm. Oh interesting. Yeah. I, uh, I I found that out like a little after myself. I was like, man, this dude looks the whole time I'm talking to him. I'm like, you look just like Adnan, dude. But yeah, someone told me, yeah, that's his son. I'm gonna come back inshallah. In the meantime, guys, please, we're looking for one person to get a thousand pounds. Let's go inshallah. Hello, uh, salam alaikum or hello, brother. How you guys doing? Thanks for having me. Thank you very much. We are good. How are you doing? Where are you calling from? America? Yeah, yeah. I'm um, from the West Coast. That's yeah. good. Uh, that's good. What's your name? Avery. My name's Avery. Yeah. A Avery? Yes. Yeah. How are you doing, Avery? Thanks for joining. Uh, please yeah, we, tell we, us. We, we, were, we were supplicated, actually, to your country. It's far from us. And so when we get in these conversations, and Muslims like, oh, yeah, wait, you know, Jesus wait, was a Muslim. Wait, stuff did he like say, that, so. wait, did he say... We were, we were supplicating your country? What the heck? He, yeah, he's saying we're supplicating that America becomes a Muslim nation. Oh, I thought he said supplicating to your country. And I was like, gosh, you guys normally bow down, supplicate to this giant pagan cube. Uh, yeah, now you're nah. supplicating to the U.S.? <laughs> <laughs> he's he's praying that America becomes an Islamic state. What are yeah. the, by the way, what, what are they raising money for? Is this for uh for people in Gaza or for a it, Dawa no, center? It, it's raising it's raising money to for this rug that they're showing that uh teaches people the motions of the prayer. And wait, so wait. there's so many wait, people what? that don't know how to pray, David, that if they donate this little towel looking thing or carpet thing, you 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 put money towards that and you're letting you know. So there's like 10 kids that can learn how to pray at once if you buy one little, you know, little tap. You'll see it. It has the images of how to pray and stuff like that. So, yeah. All right. I was hoping maybe you guys can touch on this and we could have a, a good back and yeah. forth on this. But Okay. Is, I don't know about... He's a Christian, by the way. Yeah, he's a Christian. I don't know yeah, about... Yeah, about Christian. Is yeah. Jesus Christian? There's a question. No, nah, he's not the a Christian. Christian. So Jesus is not Christian, yeah? No. Nah. So then what is... He's, he's, a, a, he's, a, he's a Jew. He's an Israelite. Israelite. You see, if he's if Jesus is wait, so what is he? I, I ask, is Jesus a Muslim? How can you guys show me this? Uh, oh, is, is Jesus a Christian? No, he's not. He wasn't a Christian. Why'd they so, change the subject? Yeah, wait, yeah, wait, exactly. you asked you you asked them to show you that Jesus was a Muslim. So you had a simple yes. request. They love claiming that. That is every single interaction mm -hmm. that uh that people ever have, that mm -hmm. any Christian ever has. With Muslims say, ah, we believe in Jesus. We believe in Jesus. We believe in Jesus. Oh, really? You believe in Jesus? You believe he's the divine son of God who died on the cross for sins and rose from the dead? No, we believe he's a Muslim. And they put this everywhere. They post it everywhere. They got all these memes. Jesus is a Muslim. And so you, what? You had a simple request. Hey, mm -hmm. I don't know what you're talking about here. Why don't you uh, give a defense of that? And then they switch it to, was he a Christian? Is exactly. that what you're saying? Exactly. Wow. 
And if he wasn't oh, a Christian, oh. if he if he wasn't a Christian, then he, I guess he had to be Muslim. Then if if if, if all else fails, like. If he's not a Christian, he had to be Muslim. Uh, interesting, though. Let's see. So, yeah. and did he submit his will to the will of God? Uh, I would say yes. So that's the meaning of Islam. Anyone who submits. Hey, his will Avery, to we're Muslims. Muslim. We're Muslims, Avery. <laughs> I'm a Muslim. You a Muslim? Y'all Muslims in the chat? We all Muslims, y'all. <laughs> Yeah, the Apostle Muslim. Paul, the Apostle Paul was a Muslim. Oh, Everyone's man. a Muslim. Yeah, Everyone who submits to God <laughs> is a Muslim. You just heard it, ladies and gentlemen. There it is. From the Sheikh. They call him a Sheikh, too, by the way. So, And guys, think about think about the problem here because our Muslim friends never see it. This, by the way, this is called equivocation. You're changing the meaning of a word. We know. Uh, and, and they'll go with kind of a just a bare linguistic meaning of Muslim when that's not what they really mean when they say someone is a Muslim, right? The, so when they say, ah, he's a Muslim because he submitted to God, okay, great. Then any Jew, any Christian who submits to God is a is a Muslim. Yeah. And they're not going to say that we're not, they're not going to want to grant that David Wood and, and, and God Logic are, are Muslims. They're not going to want to say that. And so you say, what do you mean? And then they have all these requirements for what it really means. You have to submit to God. Islam doesn't just say submit to God. It tells you how you submit to God. Exactly. And you're a Muslim if you submit to God in that way, not if you just submit to God in any way. Mm -hmm. Right. So so the, they'll but they'll want to say that Jesus, since he submitted to God, therefore, he meets that linguistic definition of Muslim, which isn't what they mean, which isn't what they mean at all. They mean he's a follower and adherent of the same religion that their prophet taught. Exactly. And so how do you show that he's actually a Muslim in the relevant sense that wouldn't also make me and Avery and the Apostle Paul and every Jew and every Christian also Muslims? Like exactly. what, what what evidence do you have there? And mm -hmm. there you'll have that's when they'll have the problem, because then mm -hmm. what they want to say is, oh, look, he prayed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What did he pray? He said, father, already not a Muslim. Wait, David, a David, you're but. spoiling it. Oh, no, okay. Yeah, 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 I keep forgetting. I keep forgetting. <laughs> God logic. God logic's in the house, and he's about to uh, take these guys to a uh, Quran school. <laughs> let's see how they welcome. Welcome to the God logic school of Christian apologetics and polemics, ladies That's and gentlemen. That's right. Let's see if uh, if you're a prophet, David. If they do exactly what you said that they do, let's see the meaning of Islam. Meaning okay. of Islam, the one who submit their will to the rule of God, those are this is he's a Muslim. Yeah, that's 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 so that's, that's, our of that's our definition of what entails a Muslim. Uh, so that's why we say when he's a Muslim, mm -hmm. this is what we mean. So when yeah. we say Muslim, we say he submits because he said this in the uh, in the in the Bible. You know, uh, mm -hmm. I do not uh, see my about the will of my father. So we claim that those statements are the will of who? The will of who? Get, get, mm -hmm. Go back there. Go back there. Mm -hmm. What did he just say? I want to make sure I didn't miss hearing. Mm -hmm. The Muslim, mm -hmm. this is what we mean. So when yeah. we say Muslim, we say he submits because he've said this in the uh, in the in the Bible. You know, uh, mm -hmm. I do not uh, see my about the will of my father. So we claim Whoa, that those things my are fa my same. father. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but but wait, watch what he oh. said. Watch what he says with this. Listen. So yeah, these things. Of a Muslim. That's why we say about the will of my father. So we claim that those statements are. The statements of a Muslim. That's why we say, <laughs> <laughs> dude. <laughs> this is this is amazing. I keep telling people that they're looking for an atmosphere of ignorance where they can spout this stuff to people, mm -hmm. and they they know their viewers are completely clueless. And so, hey, we can defend that that uh, Jesus was a Muslim, and we'll say, hey, you know, this is what we believe. He submitted yeah. to the Father, and mm -hmm. therefore, that's what we believe. Yeah. Oh boy. Oh, hey, yeah. hey, Ali Dawa. <laughs> Unless you're practicing some major deception there deliberately, congratulations, sport. You are no longer a Muslim. You're an apostate now. You're an apostate, brother. You said the universe, <laughs> the universe is ready to split apart because of what you just said, Ali the Dalla. Earth is crumbling, not, man. Not according to not according to us, according to your own book. The universe is ready to fall apart. Yep. So he said that these are Muslim about. statements, David. These are Muslim statements we agree chapter and verse with islam <laughs> chapter and verse ali dawa allah's got allah's got 99 names but father ain't one i'll tell you that much mm -hmm. so let's see he's a muslim okay so so that oh, sorry. yeah yeah so i and this is the definition that i usually get right that the meaning of a muslim one who submits their will to god um but so i but i think that there it's it's a little bit more than that because like, for example, if I were to say, hey, guys, I submit my will to God, but my God is a statue, 
You guys wouldn't say that I'm a Muslim, right? Yeah, which God? Yeah, we're no, talking about which not. God? Yeah, because you're not exactly right. Right. So the, there's a specific. It basically, has to be the true God. There's a specific concept okay. of God that you have to submit to and believe in in order to be a Muslim. We we would agree, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So this this is where we're like I like to explore things. Like so, like you know, the God of Islam, he doesn't beget nor is he begotten. Um, he's yeah. absolutely singular in his essence, right? He, you know, Tawhid, yeah. he's not a trinity, things, stuff like this. These are essential identifiers of who you say God is as a Muslim, right? And so yeah. Yeah. When, when you go to the Bible, like, do you, I, I don't think that you see Jesus believing in that concept of God that hasn't, that is not a father, has no sons, you know, things of this nature. Things a little different. Does he not, does he not, where in, where in the Bible, uh, does Jesus does the Jesus does Jesus supplicate to the Holy Spirit? Does he call up to the Holy Spirit? Well, it's, it's not not necessarily we see him supplicating to the Holy Spirit, but there is a communication there. Okay, so who does he supplicate when he goes to the mountain of Gethsemane, for example, when he prostrates he, he, he or when prostrate. he's on the cross? Mm -hmm. To who? Uh, to his Father. Okay, good. So when he's on the cross, uh, mm -hmm. when he's calling out for. Whatever it is for that matter. Yeah. yeah. Who's he, right. call, who's he calling out to? Who's he speaking to? To, to his father. Okay. So in Acts 2, chapter two, uh, 22, when it says, mm. Jesus of Nazareth, a man yeah. chosen by God with, mm. with wonders, miracles, and signs, which God did by him, and he's mm. a witness. Now, when mm. we just an analyze it from an outside perspective, for example, when he went to the mountain of Gethsemane, he prostrates. Uh, mm. When a person comes to him and says to him, Oh, good master, what must I do? He says, There is only one good, and that's God alone. So we will say that, that is, if somebody came to me and said, Ali, you are the all-knowing. I said, don't say that to me. Allah is the all-knowing. If you mm. if they saw me prostrating in the mountain and prostrating, they'll say, oh, it's prostrating to God. So these things will make us be like, hold on a second. Oh, There's on. this hang person on, who's always glorifying someone. Do you see the change of subject here? Yeah, like like multiple times, multiple <laughs> times, right? So And and they're ignoring the, the central issue, mm -hmm. which Ali Dawa brought up himself. Mm -hmm. That jesus talks speaks to the father mm -hmm. you pointed out allah's a father to no one so mm -hmm. already you're talking about someone if if allah is not a father in any sense not even in a metaphorical sense mm -hmm. allah is not is not our father and jesus calls him father and they had already agreed that if you're talking about some other god then it's not islam it, it, they wouldn't call you they wouldn't call you a muslim if you're submitting to some other god and so the entire their entire claim has already broken down in front of their faces, and the entire dawah script has already broken down. Mm -hmm. It does Muslims of the world, it doesn't work. It only works if you're talking to someone who has no clue what he's talking about. Yeah. When you say, Oh, yes, Jesus is a Muslim. Why is he a Muslim? Look right here. He submits. Who does he submit to? He submits to his father. Mm -hmm. His father. Okay. Does yeah. that line up with Islam? No. Is he talking about the same God? No. Allah condemns that in the Quran. Allah condemns any sort of father-son language in exactly. the Quran. It's the worst thing you could, it is the worst, what, what, G my goodness, what they're <laughs> saying, what they acknowledge that Jesus just did, according to the Quran, is the mm -hmm. worst possible sin anyone could commit. Yeah. It's worse than, all these guys are saying, saying Merry Christmas is worse than murder. Right. Yeah. What do you think? What do you think referring to yourself as the son and to God as father? What do you think that is? According to Islam, that's worse than murder. So think about this, Avery. If they want to still want to say they want to say he submitted to God. But he's do, what he's doing is by Islam, by Islam's definition, the worst possible sin that anyone could commit. And all the evidence we have tells us Jesus was doing this all along. Mm -hmm. So Jesus is repeatedly committing the worst possible sin in Islam, oh yes. shirk, which makes him a mushrik. And that somehow makes sense for them when they believe that Jesus was sinless. That's the point. There's no way to reconcile that. But even after that huge blunder, and then he tries to say, well, but what about the Holy Spirit? Yeah. Right. Even after that, he just said, look, look what he just said. He said, look, if someone came up to me and said, Ali Dawa, you the Almighty, I would be like, no, don't you be doing that to me because I'm just a regular person. <laughs> Do you see what happened right there? Jesus' followers repeatedly bowed down and worshipped him, and he didn't do what Ali he, Dawa just said. Exactly. If, if Jesus is just a regular man, he should be doing exactly. In fact, other people in the book of Acts, they tried to worship Paul and Barnabas. Paul and Barnabas lost their minds, ripped their clothes. What are you doing? We're just men. That's what you're supposed to do yeah. if you're a mere human being and human beings try to worship you. In the, in the book of Revelation, 
Uh, John did that to an angel. He was all freaked out, bows down to an angel. Angel says, what are you doing? Don't bow down to me. Don't bow down to me. I'm a servant just like you. That's what every created thing is supposed to do. Yep. Ali Dawa just acknowledged it. He just said what the appropriate reaction is if a if you're just a man and someone tries to worship you. And it's the opposite reaction we opposite see from Jesus. He accepts, uh, he accepts people's worship repeatedly. Yeah, absolutely. That's a good point. And so now, but here's here's what we're looking at as well. Instead of dealing with, okay, uh, we just we just established the type of God Allah is. Is Jesus praying to, submitting to, believing, and preaching this particular God that you're talking about? He runs to the deity of Christ, David. He tries to, is Jesus God his way out of this? Like most Muslims. Yeah. Do. Yeah. So and, and we want everyone to understand there are all these claims, there are all these claims that Christians want to defend, but you have to, you have to, it, when someone else has made a claim, you can't let them dodge to another issue because that's what Muslims all love to do this dodge game, right? As soon as you bring something up, Hey, you guys have claimed this. Let's see if you can defend that. They instantly want to change it to someone else. Yeah. Think about the claim being made. <laughs> Jesus is a Muslim, right? So you ask them, what, what do you mean Jesus is a Muslim? What, what could you possibly mean by that? Oh, we mean he submitted to God. Anyone who submits to God is a Muslim. Okay, well, then if I, if I, if I say, hey, this is my God and I'm going to bow down and worship this, is, 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 that makes me a Muslim, right? No, 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 no. You got to be submitting to the true God. So you're getting a little closer to the truth. And yeah. then you point out the God that Jesus submitted to does not make sense in Islamic perspective. Islam condemns, condemns. Jesus view of God. And so how can you think that Jesus is a Muslim when uh, you acknowledge that you have to be submitting to the true God and the God that Jesus spoke to does is according to the Quran, a false God. He's a false yeah. God. Yeah. And so you've already completely exposed them. And so what do they do? They switch it to, can you show that Jesus is God? And yeah. You guys weren't talking about what you're not talking about, whether Jesus is God, you're talking about whether Jesus is a Muslim, right? Mm -hmm. no, no, no. Keep in mind guys, Jesus, if Jesus was an atheist and not God, he wouldn't be a Muslim. Jesus could be 187 billion different things and not be a Muslim. Not be a Muslim. We're asking, what proof do you guys have that he's a Muslim? And they switch it. They switch it. So you, you got to pay attention when people are doing this stuff. Wow. All right. Let's see what uh let's see what gems they dropped in, man. Because maybe they actually give us something, David. Maybe they give us something legit. Let's see. Um, so so they they brought up the prayer argument. Let me see. What would you predict? Uh, once we recognize that they prayed, that Jesus prayed to the Father, what do you predict their next moves would be? Uh, you know, who's he praying to? Things like that. Uh, basically, basically the standard challenges to the deity of Christ. Things like okay. that. Okay. Um, well, let's see. Let's see if David gets it right, ladies and gentlemen, or is he just a kafir? I'm bigger than him. So we say that's the characteristics of a Muslim. So yeah. not only does he say it, but we judge by the actions. Which is it follows to be a Muslim. That's why we deem him to be a Muslim. And, from right. Aspects, anyway. and, yes. Yeah. And adding, and I, I, also, 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 I'm adding. Right. Also, I'm adding to this. Since you said he's Israelite, he is a Jew. Just to be clear, notice that not a single time did any of these guys quote the Quran. Right. The, Ali Dawa said these are reasons why we see him as a Muslim because of the actions that they see from Jesus in the Bible. That's this is what they said is why they're saying Jesus is a Muslim. Just to point that out, wasn't me, it was them. Well, mm -hmm. The Jews believe, and the, uh, for example, the background that they came from, they believe in the one God, for example. At that time, they believe this God, this God is no, it's not similar to his creation. God is not a flesh, according to the Old Testament. According, God is not a flesh, God is not a body. Uh, what was your name? Av Avery. Avery. Avery, before mm -hmm. you just answer, I just want to give a quick update just on the up, uh, donation. Just give me just one minute, yeah? yeah? He seems polite, he seems reasonable. We're just having a little dialogue. Yeah. Uh, obviously, in Ramadan, we try not to get into this, but he seems reasonable. We're just going to try to continue and see where we can come to a common understanding. Yes, most, most but please carry on with the donation, guys. Yes, uh, Avery was going to say something. Yes, yes, yes. yes. So uh, I don't want to be too long with it. There's there was a lot said. I'll try to be as succinct as I can so I could get like your, your responses. Cool. So just starting with with uh, you, Ali, um, when you're you you guys quoted you know these verses where Jesus is praying to the Father, right? That he's submitting his will to the Father, um, and you're saying that these you know shows that he's you know pointing, glorifying the Father, giving that type of adoration to the Father. Yeah. And so, and I agree with all of these verses. I totally agree. If we're like taking taking the deity of Christ out, 
I don't think that you need the deity of Christ, like whether he's God or not, in order to have this discussion of him being a Muslim. Like it, it, let's let's just if I were to eliminate that just about yeah. what he believed and what he taught, we can see if he was a Muslim or not, you know. And so if he's yeah. saying that, yes, he's he's praying to his father. He was sent by his father. And he's the son of God in all of these verses. <clears throat> Would would and you're saying that in these verses it shows that he's a Muslim. My question would be then: so if these verses are showing that he's a Muslim, would you then say that Allah is his father? Then, since he's prostrating to his father, he's you know praying to his father. Is Allah yeah, his father? The, the, yeah. The wording used in the Bible is the father, <laughs> but what we say <laughs> is that we do not believe. Uh, uh, but Allah is our uh, ab, he is our Rabb. Uh, so what we see is we don't <laughs> refer to him as the father. So that's uh, for why example, not? That's why not? Ali Dama? Jesus you know, did. For example, when why you Bible follow Jesus? About... <laughs> yeah, guys, yeah. <laughs> these are perfectly yeah, Islamic yeah. statements, Islamic Islamic moves, and and all that kind of stuff, right? Why not? <laughs> yeah, guys, guys, are you paying attention? This is a master class because this is a. Keep in mind, guys, these are these are like the champions of Dawah right here. Mm -hmm. These are the champions of Dawah. This yeah. is the best they can come up with. Every last Dawah guy you ever run into, Jesus is a Muslim, Jesus is a Muslim, Jesus is a Muslim. What do you guys mean by Muslim? Oh, it means he submits to God. Okay, so anyone who submits to God in any way is a Muslim. So I'm a Muslim, he's a Muslim, that's a Muslim, that's a Muslim, my Aunt Maple's a Muslim, everyone's a Muslim, right? According to you, because we're all submitting in some way or another. No, 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 you have to submit to the one true God. Oh, okay, so you believe that Jesus is submitting to the one true God. Uh-huh. How do you, why do you believe that? It says right here, my father, wait, what? So the true God is the father of Jesus. Uh -oh. that, that's the true God. The true God is the father of Jesus. And then you did, you go, well, according to the Quran, Allah is a father to no one, not in any sense, not a literal sense, not a metaphorical sense. In no sense is Allah a father to anyone. In fact, according to the Quran, the worst possible sin anyone can commit ever is saying that Allah has a son. That's it. Yeah. And if you actually are claiming to be the son, my goodness, you are the all-time mm -hmm. worst sinner. If you're mm -hmm. encouraging other people to call you the son of God, mm -hmm. it doesn't get any worse than that, guys. Yep. So from an Islamic perspective, the Jesus we read about in the Bible is the worst possible thing anyone could ever be. He's doing <laughs> the worst thing. He has, according, if Islam is true, Jesus convinced more people to commit more shirk than anyone else in history. He would be the ultimate false teacher and false prophet, according to Islam. Exactly. They're saying he's a devout Muslim. And so Ali Dawah, what did he try to, what, 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 did, what did Avery do? So, hey, when Jesus says, Father, you're saying that's Allah? You're saying that's Allah? He's He's what? He's the father of Jesus. So he's the father. Jesus is the son. Oh no, we yo, we say Lord. Yeah, you say father. We say Lord. Yeah, you can't do that. You're only allowed to call him Lord. You're not allowed to call him Father. If you call yeah. him Father, that's shirk. That's shirk. Mm -hmm. This is and he he doesn't get it. But guys, I, look, this is Avery calling into a show, three on one. <laughs> On, on on their topic, this is what they th they think they've got a really strong case here, and he just yeah. he just rips them to shreds. The on, the on, the sad part, the sad part here, Avery is, Dawa guys keep their fans so incredibly stupid they will oh, not man. understand what just happened, and that's why that's why we're talking to you guys who are watching. You need to have this exact this exact same conversation. Guys, you could have this conversation a thousand times. It will play out exactly like this. Exactly. It will play out exactly like this. And the Literally only way, the only, way they, word. <laughs> the only variation they could they could pull is to say, well, well, you know, the stuff about the father that's been corrupted or something. So they could go to Bible corruption or something like that. But other than that, other than that, they are, this is exactly the way things are going to unfold. These guys won't get it. They're too dumb. Their followers aren't going to get it. They're too dumb. But that's where you, when you have a Muslim friend that you can interact with over time, you can actually sit there with him hour yep. after hour if you need yep. it. Okay, Jesus say, says he's talking to his father. Is Allah a father? No. Okay, so is he talking to the same guy? Yes, he's speaking to Okay, he calls him father. You might have to do it. You might have to do it a thousand times before your friend gets the point. But it's worth it. It's worth yeah. it, ladies and gentlemen. So you got to just keep at it. All right. Let's see what else they see. So, see, now David said something that we might see in this conversation, guys. Let's see if uh, they pull out the stops of, you know, Bible corruption or anything like that. The sons of God. We know it doesn't mean literal sons. 
Like he mm. says, Elijah is my firstborn. Israel. So we know That's what it means by sons. It's basically righteous people, slaves. righteous individuals, whatever it is for that matter. God. So just as we don't take the son as literal, neither will we take the father as literal. I mean, I think you would yeah. say that's fair, right? Yeah, that, and, and, that, and that's, see, see, this is where this is, this also opens this up a bit. Because yes, I hear everything you're saying. It's not in a literal sense, but maybe in some spiritual or metaphorical sense that God has this father-son relationship with his prophets or Israel or believers, stuff like that, right? But this is something that, as you, as you said, Allah is your rub, your Lord, not your up. Right. And he makes it so clear that in no way, shape or form is he a father in any sense, whether it's literal, figurative, spiritual. It doesn't matter. He says yeah. he's only look at him your not, Lord, look at him not only your master, exactly. your only you yeah. know, servants or slaves. Yeah. Right? Dude, pause this. So, pause this. this is nuts, man. <laughs> this is nuts. So think about what he what. Uh, <laughs> dude, this is, this is a master class, man. This is a master class. Look at this. So. <laughs> So Jesus submitted Jesus submitted to God, so he's a Muslim, but he's talking to the Father, so that doesn't line up with Islam. And then Ali Dawah eventually gets to his response, which is the best he could give since he's since he's cornered now. That's the best he can do. Mm -hmm. Is oh yeah yeah yeah, but we don't interpret that. We don't interpret the language of father and son in the Bible literally. We interpret it metaphorically. And what do you do? You're like, wait a minute. According to the Quran, is not even metaphorically. Mm -hmm. You don't even you don't even use that language metaphorically. Metaphor, it would be a sin. It would be shirk to use the language metaphorically. And they're all nodding. To, oh, yeah, to a good point. Yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. Now, what what were they nodding to? They were nodding to like, yeah, he caught us. We thought we thought we we're gonna slip by him. We thought we we're gonna slip by him by just saying not. Uh, it's not literal. Uh, and that would be good enough. No, Allah's not a, Allah's not your father in any sense, literal or metaphorical. You pointed that out, and they're nodding. Yep, exactly. That's what the Quran <laughs> said. So wait a minute. How are the at this point? How are they not getting this? You're not allowed to call God Father in any sense, not even mm. in a metaphorical sense. That's exactly what Jesus. Called. So what? So if you say, oh, but we don't interpret literally, then what do you interpret it metaphorically? Mm -hmm. You're not allowed to do that. It's still shirk. Exactly. Jesus is a horrible sinner, no matter what, no matter um, no matter what definition of Islam you cling to jesus would end up being the worst sinner in history by islamic yeah. standards yes exactly but, he, but we respect it we we call we label <laughs> jesus the worst sinner in all of history the guy who spread more shirk committed more shirk and and spread more shirk to more people than anyone else in history and that's how we say we respect him we love him we love and jesus we love more him. Than the we love him. he's the worst sinner ever see how much we, we love, love him. him we love that most yeah. wicked man of all time according to our religion yeah, so this is this is what you see. You see them literally agreeing with like, like they they might think that I'm a Muslim myself. Like the way that they're not in in, in approval like this, they oh, are loving what I'm saying. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, alhamdulillah. Yeah, he gets it. He gets it. He's close. <laughs> I bet I am close. You know. So, but but you just by you guys nodding your heads and agreeing, you're you're seeing that what Ali Dawa just spouted out was absolute nonsense. You know, that, like what everything that he just said just went down the toilet now that you guys are agreeing with everything I'm saying right now. So where do we go from here? Let's see. It, so regardless of how like Jesus meant it, let's say like let's grant that he's meaning it in a metaphorical sense. It still goes against Islam, doesn't it? If he's saying he's the son of God and God is his father, even yeah, in a metaphor. I think I think there's a fundamental issue with the understanding here, which is OK. When we discuss with Christians like you. Um, we use your own source to explain to you how the divinity of Jesus Christ is problematic from your own sources, right? Mm. That doesn't mean that we believe word for word mm. in the current modern day Bible. Uh -oh, we don't. Oh, there it is. Busted. <laughs> there it is. They quote the Bible, but we don't believe in every single white word for word mm -hmm. what's in your Bible. And and by the way, a Avery, isn't this every single interaction we have with Muslims as well? Yes, yes. we will prove Muhammad is a prophet. We will prove that Jesus is a Muslim from your scriptures. Mm -hmm. Here it is right here. Okay, read the next verse. Oh, uh, no, that's been corrupted. Mm. <laughs> no, what? Not, even, not even read the next verse, David. Read, okay, continue yeah. reading that same verse that you're in. And Ali Dawa was the one who brought up Jesus referring to God as father, Thank my you. father. Ali Dawa brought that up. You see, that's the proof that he's a devout Muslim. Well, actually, that would what you just said would be proof that he's not a Muslim at all. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, it's been corrupted. Why'd you bring it up, sport? Why'd you bring that up as your proof? <laughs> yeah. 
So guys, here we and, are. And, yo, yo, but here, here's the problem, guys. Here's the problem. None of this is hard, guys. None of this, nope. right? Like, like you have people with, ma I mean, tons of, of biblical knowledge and can respond to everything. What you're seeing right here does not require a lot. Right. You, I mean, you might even have to look up, look up the passage. You might have to look up a couple passages, which you can do on your phone. If you mm -hmm. wanted to know exactly what the Quran says about calling Allah father or something like that. But mm -hmm. the arguments that, that Avery's using here, this is, ex this is not difficult. Any last one of you who's watching this can do this exact same thing That's right. and wreak havoc. And, and who are you going to be running to? These are guys who've been doing Dawah for decades. Mm -hmm. These guys have been doing Dawah for a long time. <laughs> And Avery's ripping them to shreds, <laughs> D doing something that any one of you could do. The point is, if Dawa guys are not just being completely ripped apart globally, and it's this easy to do, that's a problem for Christians and the church. If we're not training people how to do exactly what Avery's doing here, there's a reason these guys are going around able to spout this nonsense. They're not being challenged enough. In yeah. other words, anytime one of these guys say, hey, Jesus was a Muslim, like 20 hands should go up, say, hey, we got a problem here, got a couple of questions for you, and do exactly these same questions and watch it all collapse. And exactly. your Bible's been corrupted. Exactly. So, yeah, uh, that's that's what I want to show. Like, uh, it's it's funny. You should have seen the comment section on this, David, uh, the Muslim comment section. It was only like 100 and some people in there anyway. But, uh, you know, they're like, oh, uh, uh, Avery's not getting it. Avery's not yeah. getting it. Yeah, no you're matter, the one all, not getting it. Yeah. No, no matter all three of these guys, they answer him and he still doesn't, he still doesn't, or he still asks the same question, or he doesn't get it. Like these people are sheep, man. They yeah. they they are not they are not comprehending what is happening right before their eyes. They don't get it. They think a lot of talking means an answer was given or a, a solid yep. response was given because they talked a lot, you know. So, yeah, and that is, I mean, that is the most difficult spot there is what Dawa guys do, what they actually do. I don't mean what they pretend they're doing. What they actually do is psychologically condition their followers to mindlessly agree with anything they say, no matter how idiotic, no matter how contrary to Islam it is. Because mm -hmm. keep in mind, when, when Ali Dawa was saying, oh, yeah, because because Jesus talked to his father, that that should flip Muslims out. What the heck did you just say? What did you just say? What did you just grant right there? Are you insane? Are you even a Muslim? They they should have jumped at nope. They just they go didn't along with stop it. him. No, they didn't nothing. Stop him. Yeah, but uh, and that's the thing. You could, I mean, they're saying Avery just doesn't get it. You're you're taking everything they say and pointing it out how it does not prove their point. Mm -hmm. And so at the end, there's just nothing that proves their point at all. They're making a baseless claim that is completely refuted by all available evidence that we have. Exactly. And they're saying, you don't get it. You're you're the one who doesn't get it. You're right. There's a complete sheep mindset. Uh, your Dawa guy okay. speaks. Keep your mouth shut. And this is so extreme that like, there are times I've seen that I've seen Dawa guys just completely contradict the Quran over and over and over again. Their followers don't care. Yeah. Their follow like, even here, what this guy's just saying right here, we don't believe, we believe your book is corrupt. Okay, Allah says no one can change his words. You're saying someone can change his words. Who does every, who does every Dawah fan going to believe? They're Dawah guys. Yep. They're not going to listen to Allah. They don't nope. care what Allah says. And it's amazing because according to Muhammad, if Allah says something and you listen to a man instead, you have worshipped that man. Mm -hmm. Every last Muslim who's watching these guys right here and agreeing with them is committing shirk. Massive yeah. amounts of unpardonable shirk. That's right. By believing them and and, and w when they contradict a lot. Yep. All right. So let's get into it now. So now we are past the phase of whoever submits to God is a Muslim. We are past the phase of is Allah a father in any sense. Now we are in the phase David Wood, Mr. Dizzle himself, of oh, your Bible's corrupted. We don't believe everything your Bible says, although I'm only sticking to what you guys quoted, you know. So let's see how this goes. So, for example, okay. simply speaking, uh, from our belief, we would not believe that Allah uh, spoke with his prophets in that way, that I'm your father. We don't believe mm. that that happened in the first place. However, we use these verses to show you that, no, look, you are saying that Christ is divine. 
So why is he praying? Why is he doing this in your book, in your references? Mm. So that, that's the point here. That's the point. That's the reason why we refer. He is also trying to, is Jesus God his way out of it now? Mm. That doesn't. That's not going to work, man. Y'all could do all of that, all these little rabbit trails or red herrings. I don't care what you say. Prove to me that he's a Muslim. And that, but I mean, think about this. <laughs> they're into, that I mean, he's he's not he's trying to admit it without admitting it. He just admitted that their entire case collapsed mm -hmm. because they always want to say Jesus is a Muslim according to your Bible, mm -hmm. and then you show that he's not, mm -hmm. and then well, I don't really believe in your Bible. Your 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 Bible. I was just bringing this up, you know, hypothetically. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just it's just it's just funny because I don't really believe in your Bible. Oh well, your God did and your prophet did. Mm -hmm. So once again, you guys are. Uh, it's 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 a weird situation. I cannot think of a Muslim who who adheres to some of the basic things the Quran says. No, I can't think of. It. Yeah, they do that. You know, they do their prayers and things like that. They do those things. I can't even. I don't even know what it would look like to have a coherent position given what Allah says. That Allah is affirming that Jesus and his apostles were devout Muslims but that Allah is also affirming the inspiration and the preservation and the authority of the scriptures that Jews yeah. and Christians have in our possession, yeah. which present a very different view of Jesus from what Islam presents. There's no way out of that. There's, there's, there, is, there are zero ways out of that. And all you have to do is start asking some questions and their case starts falling apart. Yep. That's how it is, man. All right, let's see. Because obviously, as we know, I'm sure you're aware of this because you're involved in polemics that the Bible has its own issues. And we agree with the, we, 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 we know that these issues exist. You know, Bruce Metzger, who was one of the, you know, scholars Bruce in Metzger. charge of the compilation of one of the uh, Greek New Testaments was mentioning how, you know, no two are alike, you know, in terms of the manuscript traditions, <laughs> etc. You have all of these, you have the earliest, we have the earliest no New Testament going identical. back to the They're century, They're not identical. Which is hundreds exactly. of years after Jesus Christ. So we by the way, look at that deception, by the way. Hmm? Look at that deception, by the way. Bruce Metzger believed the, the New Testament is the best preserved book of the ancient world. Mm -hmm. He acknowledges that there are lots of textual variants because that's what happens when you copy a book by hand. And given the methods that people used to copy books, they would have you, you might have six scribes in a room. One person is reading the text while the others are writing it down. Mm -hmm. Guess what? There are, spell, there are spelling variants in the Greek language. You can spell words in multiple ways. So guess what? One person might write the, the name John with one N. One might write it with two Ns. You have those kinds of variants. That's the vast majority of textual variants are things like spelling differences. They don't even, if you translate, they don't, they don't even translate. They can't be translated because they have no meaning. Yeah. Um, that's what you, and that's what people like Bruce Metzger say. Guess what? Bruce Metzger, if he, in, if he investigated the manuscript tradition of the Quran would say the exact same thing. You guys have tons of textual variants here because that's what happens when you copy books by hand. You end up with textual variants, right? Mm -hmm. So he would say the exact same thing. They would all the any any of these textual critics would say the exact same thing about any book that's ever been copied by hand. Yeah. They would say the same thing. What did he just do? Said, oh yes, yes, yes. They're saying that the uh, no, no, no two Bibles are alike. Alike? What do you mean? He knows that his stupid followers, his moronic followers, are interpreting that as they have just completely different Bibles with completely different doctrines. Yeah. No, guys, pick, pick, pick any Bible. Go to, go to Matthew. Matthew one, it's the same thing. Matthew two, it's the same thing. Matthew three, it's the same thing. You'll get little variants here. Most of you, you, you. Here's what you need, ladies and gentlemen. This is what it breaks down to. One. Most textual variants are not even meaningful. They're not meaningful. They don't. They don't have the mean. They don't change the meaning of anything. Right. Yeah. So a spelling variant is is an example. It doesn't change the meaning of anything. Uh, so most textual variants are meaningless. They had. They don't affect meaning. Uh, some are meaningful, but they're they're not viable. Viable means it 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 actually can go back to the original. Right. It it can go back to the original. If you see a, a textual variant that only pops up in the 13th century. It's not viable, meaning, okay, if if uh, if no other manuscript before the 13th century has this variant until the 13th century, it's obvious someone made a textual mistake in the 13th century. Yeah. So it's not viable. It's not something you can take seriously as going back to the original. When you look at the variants that are actually meaningful, they would actually change the meaning of a verse and viable. They could go back to the original. Um, you find that there's nothing there that affects Christian doctrine. 
And what's amazing here is this is now the new position of Muslims defending the exactly. Quran. This is exact. You know, Shabir Ali, where he acknowledges that you have different uh, different Qurans in different parts of the world with different words and different meanings and so on. And some, by the way, some of those do affect practices. Some of those do affect Islamic practices and Islamic beliefs and so on. But you wouldn't say you'd get some some radically different version of Islam or something like that. You wouldn't say that. Yeah. But, but think about this. What this guy is saying, Muslim scholars like Shabir Ali are now saying as their defense of textual variants in the Quran, exactly what Christians have always said. And you've got this guy right here, knowing, knowing that the people watching him have absorbed the uh, Zakir Naik Ahmed Didat approach and so on, mm -hmm. knowing that what they're hearing when, oh, they're, no two are alike, no two are alike, knowing that they're interpreting it as, oh, you got all these different Bibles, all these different doctrines and so on. Dawah's deception, man, every step of the way. What yeah. what, what have we seen right here where they were not, where the Dawah guys were not trying to deceive their listeners in some way or another? Mm -hmm. right? Even when he's, oh, yeah, go, when, when, go see further. When Jesus said further, you know, he said further with this thing. He's, 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 he's hoping no one catches on. Didn't work. Avery caught on. Avery pinned him on. And eventually, after going back and forth and, and trying to trying to mislead people the entire time, then it's, ah, oh, but we don't even believe in your book. Oh, okay, so you just, you 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 quote a book that you don't believe in. Exactly. So it doesn't work anymore. And then, ah, oh, we don't believe in that book. It's been corrupted. Okay, but gosh, this is, they, they do all this, and then they expect us to take the religion seriously and think, yeah, see, guys, because this is what the true religion needs. Mm -hmm. The true religion needs compulsive liars and deceivers constantly trying to lie and deceive people. Yeah. That's what the true religion needs. <laughs> If I, if I if I didn't know anything else about Islam, if I didn't know one word of what's in the Quran or one word of what's in the Hadith, and I just saw that everyone, all the most popular Dawah guys, just happened to be the biggest liars I've ever seen in my life, that would tell me that would tell me enough about Islam. Like, uh, yeah, all you that, need to know, man. That's what your religion produces. I do yeah. not need your religion. There's no way the true religion needs this this to defend it. Yeah, that's the trouble that that they're in, man. So. Uh, I asked them in the beginning to prove that Jesus is a Muslim. Where they go to prove it, give me the evidence that he's a Muslim to a like book it. that they don't believe in anyway, that they say is unreliable. Why are they pulling proofs, evidences from an unreliable, fabricated source? That doesn't make any sense to me. Let's see what else they got, man. Transmission of the Bible. We have all of these issues with the Bible. We have early church fathers differing over what the canon is what is actually classed as scripture oh, so pause it. these are issues <laughs> he, can't, he, can't, he can't say two words <laughs> so think about what he said there people disagreeing over the canon mm -hmm. what can you actually hear there's only a couple legitimate things you say see this is what i mean guys they they never explain what they actually mean by things because then their follower then you could pin them down on it and then their followers would be exposed to responses that they don't, they just, oh, you know, disagreements about the canon. You, you could say two, there's two legitimate things you can say about the canon. Mm. Um, as far as the canon of the New Testament, you can say that there were some disputes about some of the minor, when they, because keep in mind, all these books, these books, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, these originally, these originally circulate as separate books. In other words, Matthew writes the gospel that circulates as the gospel of Matthew. Eventually they say, hey, we need to put these things together. So we have them in one book. We have them in one book. Yeah. Um, when that happened, when they put the canon together, there were some disputes about some of the tiny books like Second and Third John because they weren't circulating to the same extent as the Gospel of Matthew. Matthew is being circulated everywhere. Mark is being circulated everywhere. Third John not as widely not as widely distributed. So some some Christians in some places are like, "Wait a minute, we're not sure about that one." So you end up with some disputes, and they have to go through their reasoning and so on, and then. First, second, third John, of course, end up in in the canon. You mm -hmm. can say that, and then you can point out that uh, that uh, uh, lots of Catholics include what are called the the deuterocanonical books. So this is the, these are the these are the um, the 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 the, uh, the books that were between the two testaments. Yeah. Right. So there, there were some books written between the Old Testament and the New Testament. Keep in mind, Catholics and Protestants, same Matthew. Catholics and Protestants, same Mark. Catholics and Protestants, same Luke, same mm -hmm. John. We have the same 27 books of the New Testament. Mm -hmm. They believe in some additional books written in between the Old Testament and New Testament. So yeah. what is there? What can you actually say? If you say there's a dispute about 3rd John, or if you say there's a dispute about these uh, these intertestamental books, 
how does this affect what Avery was saying about what's in the Gospels that all Christians agree on? Thank you. Nothing, nothing, nothing is affected. Thank and then you can expect, so then you can, then you can, uh, you, you can, you can, uh, you can go further in two different ways. You can point out if it's a problem, if it's a problem that there were disputes about, let's say second or third John, if there are just, if that's a problem for Christians, and this proves that our book cannot be trusted, uh -oh. Avery, Avery, <laughs> is it true that the First generation of Muslims had disputes about what's supposed to be in the Quran. Absolutely. Matter of fact, one of them got beat up for it. Ibn Masood this, got beat to a pulp. This is interesting stuff, guys. Because keep in mm. mind, when you're talking about disputes over the Christian camp, you're talking about like later generations. You're talking about later generations of people. The first generation of Muslims couldn't agree on what was supposed to go into the Quran. Muhammad's mm -hmm. companion, and this is what, and they, Muslims do not, cannot get their minds around how huge a problem this is. <laughs> There's no way out of this, guys. There's no yeah. way out of this. Muhammad said, if you want to learn the Quran from anyone, learn it from these four people. I gave a list of four people. Yeah. Two of the people, two of the people on that list, we <laughs> know for a fact, disagreed with today's Quran, disagreed with the, even the chapters in today's yeah. Quran. Yep. Abdullah ibn Masood. This was Muhammad's top guy. Muhammad said, if you want to learn the Quran from anyone, learn it from Abdullah ibn Masood. Abdullah yep. ibn Masood had 111 chapters in his Quran because he said Surah 1, Surah 113, and Surah 114 are prayers. This is us speaking to Allah. The Quran is Allah speaking to us. Don't hmm. put our prayers to Allah that we use on the same level as Allah speaking to us. These are completely wow. different stuff. These are completely different things. Do not put these things together. Ubay ibn Kab had all 114 of the chapters that are in the Quran today and two additional prayers. No. So you had two ends of the spectrum and both of these guys are on Muhammad's list. You want to learn the Quran from anyone? He gives a list of four people, Abdullah ibn Masood and Ubay ibn Kab, both on that list. These guys, one of them has 111 chapters in his Quran. One of them has 116 chapters in his Quran. Mm. Zaid ibn Thabit wasn't on that list. No, nope. he gets assigned to come up with. Uh, he gets assigned to come up with an authoritative Quran, specifically because so much of the Quran was being lost. The entire reason that the Quran was put together into a book was because they were originally trying to preserve it by memory, and it was failing miserably because they were in multiple wars, and they kept losing people who had the Quran memorized and losing parts of the Quran. So the original Quran was put together as a book just for the purposes of, it's not to be read. It wasn't to be passed around. No one's passing around the Quran. It's just we need a copy to put and have in someone's house so that the more so that as more people die, we're not losing more of it. We've already lost, we've already lost multiple chapters of the Quran. We already lost more than 200 verses just from Surah 33 alone. This is the perfectly yeah. preserved book that they used to tell us about, right? So, so the point is, if it's a problem, if it's a problem that Christians at some point had disputes or that Christians today still have disputes about the canon of scripture. What do you do with Muhammad's top experts mm -hmm. in the Quran not not uh, not agreeing on what's supposed to be in the Quran? They did they not agree on which chapters are supposed Uth to be in there. They literally begged Uthman to save this people from, you know, save this nation so that they do not disagree about the book like the Jews and the Christians do. That's literally what the Hadith says. So then following all of this, Uthman then goes on like what David says, assigns Abin Thabit and a few others to rewrite the Quran in a perfect copy suitable to his liking and then burn the others. Mm -hmm. Ibn Masood and his students did not turn in their Qurans. Ibn Masood fact, he, he said, he yeah. said, do not hand your Qurans over to this guy. Exactly. Do not hand them over to this guy. This is, this is, a guy, Muslims, I want, I would really love to have Muslims explain this. Yeah. If Muhammad says, does my, Avery, according to Islam, does Muhammad know what he's talking about? According to Islam, yes. So Muhammad knows what he's talking about. So Muhammad, yeah. who knows what he's talking about, yes. who's who's the, that guy's the walking, living, talking Quran. The walking Quran, man. Muhammad, who knows the Quran better than anyone, says, guys, if the rest of you want to learn it from anyone, learn it from that guy. Mm -hmm. And that guy, the guy that that Muhammad himself said, this is the guy you need to learn the Quran from. That guy says, this Quran's wrong. It's got three extra chapters that aren't supposed to be in here. Not supposed yeah. to be in here. 
Mm. They're not supposed to be in here, guys. This is a Quran. And he, when the guy who's putting out this Quran <laughs> says, hey, everyone hand over your Qurans because we're going to burn them all and put out the, the, the correct one. He says, hide your Qurans. Do not hand them over to this guy. These guys don't know what they're talking about. Yeah, this is. I mean, this is a. Oh. And matter of fact, matter of fact, in, in Ibn Saad, in Ibn Saad, he even said the people have been guilty of deceit in the uh, handling of the Quran. I like to read it better, according to Muhammad. And so he's saying this is deceit. This is a deception. This is Muhammad's top guy. Guys, how do you get out of this? You got two options. If Muhammad knew what he was talking, you know, there are only two options. There are two. Count them. Two possibilities. Pick one, Muslims. Pick one. You only get one, but you have to pick one of these two. Yeah. If Muhammad knew what he was talking about with the Quran, this Quran is wrong because the guy, because Muhammad said, learn the Quran from that guy. Mm. And if Muhammad knew what he's talking about, then he knew the best guy, the best, most reliable guy on the Quran. He knew who that was. It was Ibn Masood. And Ibn Masood says, this is a big fat lie. It's got multiple chapters that are not supposed to be in here. They were added by deception. So if Muhammad knew what he was talking about, this book is wrong. You can't trust it. <laughs> if, on the other hand, you can trust this book, if you say, no, this is the book that got it right, this has the correct, the correct chapters of the Quran, then Ibn Masud was wrong, and Muhammad was wrong about who knew the Quran and who didn't. So yeah. your own prophet was a dope con con who, uh, when it came to the Quran. When it came to the Quran, he didn't know. Uh, other people had it. He thinks, oh, this guy knows the Quran best. And that guy didn't know the Quran best. There were other people who knew it better, who could tell, who could school that guy on, on, on what the Quran really is. So either you have the wrong Quran or Muhammad was a moron. Take your pick. Either you have the wrong Quran or Muhammad didn't know enough about the Quran. Um, Muhammad didn't even know. Uh, Muhammad picked the wrong guy. Take your sorry. pick. Those are your two options. Neither one of these is good for you, my Muslim friends. But uh, think, I mean. Guys, this this again goes back to a problem with the Christian community. Everything I just said, nothing I just said right there is difficult. Nothing that Avery's been pointing out is 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 too difficult for an average Christian to learn. Yeah. These Dawa guys get away with this stuff mm -hmm. because Christians just don't become trained to respond to this. Yeah. And there's 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 no excuse, ladies and gentlemen. There's no excuse. These aren't things that you have to be some great Bible scholar to answer. You just have to you just have to spot the 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 lies and the hypocrisy and and the inconsistency. That's it. And just keep pointing yeah. it out. Dawa will collapse. Dawa will fall to pieces. It already is, but we can accelerate that. David, I, I will say this, man. Um, ever since that we've been like pressing this issue on Jesus is a Muslim, I've been pressing a lot, right? And especially on the TikTok like world. And on TikTok. Christians are now in their hosting lives or they're joining Muslim panels. They are now able to comfortably dismantle that. So I'm like, I'm watching it happen. I'm watching it happen. And they're dismantling this topic with ease because it's that easy. Like this isn't like, as David, this isn't profound. I'm not using, you know, uh, elaborate speech or super deep reasoning. I'm, it's just, it's just one plus one plus one plus, you know, that's it. It's super easy. It's super easy. And Christians are getting it. Well, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm watching it. It's, it's, a, it's a blessing. Christians are getting it and they're destroying Muslims on their panels with this topic, man. It's, it's amazing. It's, it's a blessing for real. No, this is, these are awesome times because guys, uh, keep in mind, there's a, there's a reason for this. Modern Dawa kind of grew up in an atmosphere of ignorance, right? When, yeah. when, when people like Ahmed Didat and Zakir Naik started training people, here's how you go after Christians. Those, Christ, those Christians knew absolutely nothing about Islam. They knew nothing about the Quran. They knew nothing about the Hadith. They knew nothing about the history of the Quran. They knew nothing. So when a Muslim came up and, ah, the Quran's been perfectly preserved. I heard it from from uh, from uh, from Ahmed Didat. He said it, and I just believe him because that's what I've been trained to do. I've been trained to mindlessly agree with, with that guy, not to do any sort of research. Hmm. And Christian uh, Christians didn't know how to respond. The what? Their book's perfectly preserved? They all keep saying it's perfectly preserved, so it must be perfectly preserved. Huh, my book? Mm, my book's got textual variants, but theirs doesn't? Mm, that's what... Dawa, Dawa was designed to deceive people in yeah. an atmosphere of ignorance. Now yeah. what you have is, now people are catching on, and Christians are responding. And so these guys give the same old Dawa arguments. And Christians are responding now. Dawa is starting to break down. Again, it's already it's already starting. This is why their argument from perfect preservation has now collapsed. Their argument from scientific miracles has now collapsed. Even according to them, these arguments were bogus. 
Um, that guys, that's because of us. That's because we we just kept relentlessly exposing their nonsense, but yeah. they're still clinging to some of these things. Guys, you just Christians out there, you got to keep learning, learn responses to this stuff. If you don't know a response to something, ask someone. And if Christians just keep doing it, you're going to see Dawa collapse more and more until it's just considered the biggest joke in human history. Yeah, absolutely. All right, let's dig into some more of this stuff, man. This is some good stuff. That the Christians have to solve. For us, these are not issues. For us, our primary sources in Islam. <laughs> For us, these are not oh issues. Goodness. This I'm like not, what a joke. This guy can't say one. This guy can't say one sentence. It's not an issue. What are you talking about? It's not an issue because when all these disputes and and variants arose, your solution was let's burn it all. Mm -hmm. So that, that's that's one. Guess what, Avery? We could do that right now if Christians were were acted like these guys. We could do yeah. the same thing. We could just pick a Bible. We could just pick a manuscript, burn everything else, and then hey, look, we got no variants. We yeah. got no variants because yeah. we burned the we burned all the variants. Ha ha! See how smart we are, right? Wow. So that's one thing. And then when he wants, when he says sources, if, if he says sources, it's Quran and it's Quran and what hadith? You saying there's no disputes about the hadith? You have entire branches of Islam that use completely different collections of hadith. So what's he talking about? And the 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 actual hadith that they use are from centuries mm -hmm. after the events. Sahih al-Bukhari, their favorite source, was two centuries after the time of Muhammad. It uses one of the dumbest methods ever used by anyone ever. Even scholars who are even non-Muslim scholars who are friendly towards Islam, they consider like Hadith methodology a complete joke. It's like the it's like they, they, they treat it like it's an actual, not like an actual joke. They know that Muslims believe it, but they think it's a complete total joke. Mm. They're saying, but no one disputes, no one disputes our sources. Are you drunk? Were you drinking <laughs> during Ramadan, dude? Were you were uh, ah. <laughs> Y'all got David spitting fire today. The Bible or the Injil. Our mm. primary source for our referencing is the Quran, the, the Sunnah, the Hadith of the Prophet Muhammad. The, the Prophet. So simply speaking, if Allah says something to us in the Quran, that for example, Jesus said X, Y, and Z, and then a Christian comes to us like you are right now and says, well, Jesus didn't say that in the Bible. Well, we would say we don't need Jesus to say that in the Bible because... We have our primary sources telling that, and your Bible has problems as a source, as a primary source. You okay, see what, you see where you're coming from. I, I understand your perspective. So, yeah. I, I, obviously, I would, I dis, I have my disagreements, but I, I want to make it clear that, you know, I'm not coming from an angle of Jesus is God, therefore he's not a Muslim. Like I'm, I'm granting that. Let's let's yeah. take, like I said, right. Let's take the deity of Christ out. I don't think that the, the deity of Christ is a subject that is necessary to determine if we can find out if Jesus, by what he taught and believed, is a Muslim or not. Yes. Right. We can just but talk you're about using your, the, the issue is, uh, Avery, that you're using the yardstick for our conversation, the scripture that you're using as a foundational basis for our conversation. You're using the Bible. Well, wait, no. to you, we yeah, only yeah, refer to the Bible for you. We don't refer to it okay. because we believe. Yeah. In you know, we don't have a problem with saying that mm -hmm. Jesus. If someone came to me, if a Christian came to me and said, Okay, do you believe that Jesus said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one God, one God, etc.? I would say, mm -hmm. I don't have a problem believing that Jesus said that. I don't have mm -hmm. a problem. Actually, I can believe that he did say that, yes, uh -huh. because that's affirmed in the Quran, yeah. right? Yeah, and, and he has used the term ahad, by the way, <laughs> even in the Old Testament, ahad is a unique Semitic term. Which means one and yes. unique one. And Thank you guys. So, um, like, so remember, like, as you said, I, I wasn't the one who based this conversation off of the Bible. Like, I, I wasn't the one that brought up the Bible. It was hey, go ahead, a couple of quick. references. You know, that, say that again. Oh, I said pause it real quick because uh, mm -hmm. I just wanted. I, I just wanted to. We can't emphasize enough how disputed the mm -hmm. hadiths mm -hmm. are, mm -hmm. right? So, I mean, one, these, these sources are put together in an atmosphere where people like Bukhari were having to sift through literally hundreds of thousands of stories to try and get the ones that he believed are, are the best of the best. Um, and then even within the ones that he thought were the, the 7,000 or so best, you'll have Muslims uh, disputing some of these. 
Uh, yes. But I mean, that that's of Muslims who believe in the collections. You'll have other Muslims who say, I don't trust I don't trust Bukhari and I don't trust the people he's he's quoting. Those were those were people who opposed Ali. Right. So you can't you can't trust these guys. So Sunnis and Shias will have different collections and so on. I, I just want to read a little passage from there aren't a ton of Hadith of non-Muslim Hadith scholars. There are lots now uh, nowadays mm. of non-Muslim Quran scholars, right? People who go into an academic background and go into Quran studies, but they aren't Muslims and so on. There aren't a lot of non-Muslim Hadith scholars, but those who are, are like, like in the case of Joshua Little here, who did his dissertation in Oxford, they're friendly towards Islam. They're trying to defend Islam. Like this guy is, is, is uh, constantly saying he's trying to take away the weapons of the Islamophobes so that they can't be used to attack Islam and so on. So this is not a hostile guy. This is not a guy who's attacking Islam. Interesting, but he studied. He studied all of the hadith. Uh, he studied all the hadith literature and the entire background and the history and so on. Here's his assessment. Here's his, here's his assessment. You ready for this? Yeah. This is this is a guy who did his dissertation at Oxford on the hadiths, and this is his assessment after reviewing the methodologies and so on. That hadith are unreliable. That any given mutton cannot be taken as this the, the content of it, that any given mutton cannot be taken at face value as an accurate datum from the first Islamic century, and that any given isnad cannot be taken at face value as an accurate record of a mutton's provenance cannot be seriously contested for multiple reasons, right? So he's saying you, you, just, you can't take this stuff at uh, at face value. First, there is an overwhelmingly the first there is an overwhelming prior probability based on the ubiquity of fabrication and pseudepigraphy in late antique and medieval religio historical pagan Jewish and Christian ascriptions. He's saying everyone's inventing stories around this time. Mm. So, but so if, if if you say, hey, someone came up with a with a story at this time, saying everyone's fabricating sources during this time. So be careful. Uh, secondly, there is the high frequency of contradictions within the Hadith corpus, mm. which necessitates the occurrence of a huge amount of fabrication, interpolation, and or mutation, and therefore skepticism towards any given Hadith. So these things are so contradictory, and you see so much mutation in various versions of it, mm -hmm. that there's you'd be skeptical of any, any particular Hadith. Mm. Thirdly, there is the ubiquity of fabrication and interpolation, both reported and demonstrable. In other words, saying some people saying actually this guy did fabricate stuff and did fabricate and and and, and write, write this. And he says and demonstrable, meaning no one said it, but you can prove you can prove that people are making stuff up. So he says there is the ubiquity and fabrication and interpolation, both reported and demonstrable in the Hadith corpus, which again casts doubt upon the rest of the corpus. Fourthly. There is the rapid extreme mutation and growth of reports that evidently took place over the course of a century or more of oral tradition, which means that any given matin, regardless of the asnad, is likely at best heavily distorted and at worst obliterated beyond its original form. He's saying there was so much, there was so long a period of oral tradition and these stories mutating. He says, any for any given any given story any given story it's at best heavily distorted and at worst obliterated beyond its original form wow fifthly there is the belated emergence of hadith the belated emergence of hadith as a genre and corpus largely during the 8th and 9th centuries ce which straightforwardly precludes the authenticity of most ascriptions to the 7th century CE. In other words, when you see the names going all the way back to a companion of Muhammad, he said they weren't doing that in the 7th century. Therefore, all of these things are forgeries from later on when they when they give these lists of names. Uh, and let's see, finally, he says, uh, the chronology is the core of what we can, uh, he says, this chronology is the core of what we call the revisionist model of Hadith development, which is inferable and corroborated by multiple independent points of evidence, including dissonant reports attesting to early generic notions of Sunnah and early vague notions of prophetical Sunnah, dissonant reports attesting to the origins of the Isnad during the second Fitra and the spread and generalization of the Isnad and Hadith during, he just goes on and on and on. Um, and so it's just, this is what happens. He says, you can't trust this stuff. It's mm -hmm. way too late. We know about it. The, the basic, 
if, if you when when you when you lay out every, everything, ladies and gentlemen, um, wow. Islam used to be regional. Islam used to be regional. There's kind of an Islam, and they're connected, but there's there's a, there's a, a regional Islam around Mecca. There's a regional Islam around Medina. There's a regional Islam around Kufa, and so on. You have these regional versions of Islam, and they had diametrically opposed teachings on certain things. What's what's halal and what's haram. And they had all these disagreements. Eventually, you get to a period where they say, no, there has to be one Islam. We need to come up with a method. That's when everyone starts competing for their version being truth. And so what do they do? They start writing all these isnads saying, oh, this goes back to a companion of Muhammad so they can they can defend it. Mm -hmm. And this went on. So this went on. Eventually, eventually, you 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 know, we, they come up with uh, Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih Muslim. And they say, these are these are the most reliable. The, these are the scholars that won out in their disputes. These are the... the the, the hadiths that are contained there, these are the ones that won out. They they made up things the fastest with their asnads and so on. And the, the point here is, look at what actual scholars say about the sources that he just said, ha, we're not we're not in confusion like you Christians. <laughs> you you Christians, you know, you don't know what Jesus said and so on. What 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 what, what do we quote when we talk about Jesus? We quote nothing but first century sources. That's right. We quote nothing but first century sources. When you guys are quoting Muhammad, what first century sources are you quoting? None. You have zero. You're quoting sources that came from two centuries later in an atmosphere where everyone is competing for to make their regional version of Islam supreme. And then right. some people eventually win out. And then you act like you have no problems. You guys what? fought war over your, you guys fought war over your disagreements back in the day. And you're saying, oh, no, no, we, no, no, no problem. What he really means is we wow. don't treat our stuff critically. We've been programmed to not be critical at all, right. just to mindlessly affirm these sources and not to question them. And, well, see, we're much better off than you guys. No, this is this is a disaster. This is a disaster. So, yeah, don't let them get away with it. Where, where can we what, what's that guy's name that you just read again? That's Joshua Little. So he's Joshua. this guy does not like us. This guy doesn't like us because we criticize Islam. So he doesn't, mm -hmm. he, he doesn't, uh, he doesn't like that, but he did his dissertation. You can look it up. Um, it was Joshua. uploaded to the website, islamicorigins.com, islamicorigins.com, islamicorigins.com. You'll have to look through there. That's where I downloaded it, but it's by Joshua Little. Got it. And it's his dissertation. His thesis title is The Hadith of Aisha's Marital Age, a study in the evolution of early Islamic historical memory. Wow. And so he eventually goes through the Hadith about, I, keep in mind, this is a guy who's like saying that Aisha wasn't nine. Why? Because you can't even trust the Hadith. The Hadith are so disastrous that even if you have over 200 Hadiths about Aisha's age, they're so unreliable and so untrustworthy. You can't even trust stuff like that. Yeah. But there's no disputes about their sources. Their sources are, are good as gold. Right, right, right. There's no, there's no problem. massive joke. No, no, no worries about hadith, canon, uh, you know, chapters belonging to Quran. They're all good. They're all good. All right. Ali mentioned, and um, um, I don't know the brother's name who was just talking, uh, but but you know, he he also quoted some Bible verses that point to Jesus being a Muslim. So I'm coming from the verses that was quoted. You know, to me, I I didn't I didn't go to the yeah. to the Bible, yeah, but this this what I, yeah this <laughs> what I would ask this what I would ask could we at least then say um, that according to these like these usual famous verses Jesus prostrating to the Father Jesus yes. saying that he submits his will to the Father um, yes. yes they I'm, show I'm, submission I'm, and, just to no, I'm not interrupting your point just to mention here we have no problem believing that these things actually happen because they're in line with our beliefs about Jesus. Uh -oh. yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So, so the, the submission would be in line right, right with your belief, except the theology mm -hmm. behind his submission, because he's submitting to what he is saying to be his father. So yes. would you, yeah, could, because, we, could we say that at least according to these verses, that if we were to take these verses mm -hmm. as they are, at least according to these verses, Jesus isn't a Muslim. Theologically. By the way, by the way, by the way, I just wanted to mention something. Yeah. Uh, again, as Brother Musa Musa said just a minute ago, we are not taking the Bible as a primary source for us. You guys oh, yeah. quoted it. How many times? How many times, Quran, how many times are you gonna say it? <laughs> Y'all quoted it. Over guys, over and over again. Look, Muhammad is right here. Muhammad is right here in your Bible. This is this is the proof that Muhammad is a true prophet. Uh, actually, let's read the verse before and after, and uh, this doesn't line up with Islam. Well, I, we don't care what your Bible says. The Bible's been corrupted. This insanity, 
guys, we, you, you have to, you should be pointing this out in every single discussion with Muslims, how yeah. insane this is. How do you know, Muslims, how do you know that this book, the Quran, is the inspired word of Allah? Well, this book tells you. It tells you that you know Muhammad is a prophet, so his book is true because he's in the scriptures of the Jews and Christians. Mm -hmm. So Muslims go to the scriptures of the Jews and Christians say, look, here's Muhammad. And we say, let, actually, let, let's read this a little more carefully. This is not Muhammad. This actually proves that Muhammad's a false prophet. And they say, oh, your book's been corrupted. Why did your God use this as his argument? Why did your yeah. God say, hey, you want proof? Go to that book. Got and we'll, all his followers, oh, no, you can't go to that book. It's corrupted. But we'll go to it anyway. Until it disagrees with us, then it's corrupted. This is insane. Yeah. This is, I mean, this is insane. So, I mean... If you believe, if Allah believed that the Bible's corrupted, why would you send people to a corrupt book? Why? Why in the name of common sense would you use as one of your primary arguments and evidences a book that has been corrupted? Did because Allah know? Did know. Allah know that when his dawah clowns, his champion dawah clowns actually go to the Bible and find something, oh look, here it says it right here. This is about Muhammad. Did he not know that the verses that come right before it and the verses that come right after it completely contradict Islam and that it would he would make it very simple for us to say, actually, that doesn't show Muhammad's a prophet. If you just read before and after, this proves that he's a that he's a false prophet. What mm. do you do there? Did Allah know that they were going to run into this problem? Did he? Mm. If so, why use it as an argument? Why would you appeal to a corrupt book? So, I mean, just look at how this look at how this works. Allah doesn't know what's in the Quran. Muhammad doesn't know what's in the Quran. I mean, doesn't know what's in the Bible. And so they affirm, hey, that Bible, that, that supports Muhammad, gives a big thumbs up to Muhammad. You read it. No, don't believe in Muhammad. He's a false prophet. <laughs> He's a false prophet. Do not believe anything that guy says. Not only, it's according to the Bible, Muhammad's the most obvious false prophet that's ever existed. He, meet, there are, he meets more requirements of a false prophet than anyone else has ever More met. than Joseph Smith? Yeah, yeah, I would say yeah. We, wow. We're still going to have that debate at some point of, yeah. of who the most obvious false prophet is that. in history. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so Muhammad, let's let's just say he's definitely top three, top yeah. three of all time, yeah. period, right? So does Allah know that he's sending people as confirmation of Muhammad's revelations? Does he know he's sending people to a corrupt book? You, as a Muslim, you'd have to say, yeah, he knew it was corrupt and he sent it to him anyway, knowing that that we we could get away with these arguments when no one's paying attention, but then anyone's everyone's going to expose us. Uh, Allah knew that was going to happen, and that's what he did. And his entire community is now insane over this. Because they, oh, we appeal to the Bible. We'll prove it from the Bible. Actually, it doesn't work. Oh, we don't believe in your Bible. Oh, okay, you don't believe in the Bible. Then don't use the Bible. Ah, oh, but we have to use the Bible because Allah says we have to use the Bible. But the Bible refutes it. Well, what? We don't believe in the Bible. Get that Bible out of here. Don't touch it. Okay, what, how are you going to prove it? Because we're going to go to the Bible. Like, they are, <laughs> like, like they seem, the, the Dawah guys seem mentally deranged. And they don't get it. Why? Because whoever actually wrote the Quran was pretty mentally deranged. There's no way around it. <sighs> it's corrupted, man. Just get over it. Jesus, peace be upon him, is Muslim. Affirm yeah. that he's a prophet sent by God. Affirm about his miraculous birth. Affirm about this. Those, are, these are our primary sources. So when we are, when we hear, for example, in other new sources that he prostrate to God, he did this, is actually affirm to the same concept that we are using, we are we are using as, as a primary source. Even though, regardless, if you find the Bible, even if we never read the Bible, still for us, the primary source is the Quran, which is because the, the, the original Bible, the original gospel is already lost. There is nothing out of it. It's not there. Really? So for us, the primary source of the Quran, Allah didn't and know Quran that. affirmed to us, Jesus is a Muslim, affirmed to us he's a prophet. You you had a, a interview with Prophet Bart Ehrman, right? Yeah. And didn't you ask him if you can use, if he would use the Quran as a historical, uh, reliable source in the life of Jesus? Uh, no. Yeah. Yeah. He said, no, no one used that as a historical source. Uh, he says, he says, even, even for the critics and skeptics, you go to the Bible as your source. Interesting. It doesn't mean you believe everything. You you apply critical methodologies and stuff, but they believe that that is where you go. But I mean, mm -hmm. think about this. This guy's saying, I mean, there's so many problems. Guys, these are champion da'is. These are champions of da'wah. They cannot come up with a coherent position. They cannot come up with a position that even remotely makes sense. Everything, <laughs> to anyone who has any clue what's going on here, this guy sounds like he's the stupidest person in the world 
or he's completely insane. It's one or the other. What do, what did he just say there? We believe that the gospel is you. We don't go to the gospel. You can't go to the gospel because the gospel is it's. We no longer have it. His God says over and over again that we have it. Over and over and over again. His prophet says that we have it. Mm -hmm. His prophet says. His prophet says in the hadith that we still have the gospel. Allah says that Christians read about Muhammad in the gospel. Allah yeah. wants Christians to judge by what we read in the gospel. Allah mm -hmm. says we have no ground to stand upon unless we stand upon the gospel. This yeah. is in the seventh century. This is in the seventh century. Avery, do we have copies of the, of the gospel from before the seventh century? Way from, before, during David. During the seventh century and after the seventh century? During and after, before, all of it. So we know what the Quran is affirming. And this is just, guys, this is just amazing to me. Allah says, They've got the gospel. They've got it. 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 Period. They've got it. Now hmm. use it. And these guys come along. Oh, we'll we'll use it. But no, they don't. Have, they don't got it. It's amazing. They could just say the exact opposite of what Allah says, and they don't see a problem. If you're wondering why, it's because they have to. Mm -hmm. They have to. Yeah. They have to be like this. They have to be completely inconsistent. Yeah. And so and so, but just think. So that he one he's saying, oh, they don't have the gospel contradicting his God and his prophet. So every single Muslim, if you watched him and you go, yep, that's right. You just disagreed with a man as opposed to Allah and his messenger. You are no longer a Muslim. You're an apostate. Yep. Welcome to the club because there's lots well, of you out here growing, growing, growing every day. And the other thing he did is, yep, anything we read that he... <laughs> so notice it's, we go, to the, we go to the Quran to learn about Jesus. Mm -hmm. So you go to a seventh century book to learn about a first century guy and you reject the first century sources to go to your seventh century source because that's how you do history. And you think that's a met. And again, not one of their followers will, will point out that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. You've got all these first century sources. You're going to ignore them. You're going to go to a seventh century source uh, revealed to a guy who, uh, who who was a caravan robber and had sex with a nine year old girl. And you're just going to anything that guy said, that's what we're going to believe. No, who cares about the first century people who were there? We don't care yeah. about them. Right. No. Don't listen to them. So that's a method. So, so think about this. Where do they go to learn about Muhammad? Sources from two centuries after the time of Muhammad. Where do they go about? G Where do they go to learn about Jesus? <laughs> Sources seven <laughs> centuries after the time of Jesus. Yeah. Why do you take Muhammad's words so seriously? Why do you take Muhammad so seriously that you'll listen to anything he says? Anything, anything he says and anything in his book. Why do you believe? Oh, because we can trust him because of these sources centuries after his time. Two cent, we got these sources from two centuries after his time. And so we know we can trust everything in the Quran. You trust everything in the Quran, right? Yeah. Can you trust it when it says that Christians still have the gospel? No. Can nope. you trust it when it says that uh that 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 Christians have to judge by the gospel, not by the Quran, but by the god but by the gospel? No. Nope. Can't trust it. Can you trust it when it says that uh that Christians have no ground to stand upon unless we stand upon the gospel? Nope. Can you trust it when Allah says that he was going to protect Jesus' followers until the day of resurrection? Oh, heck no, no. Can you trust him when he says he aided the true followers of Jesus until they became uppermost over those who rejected Jesus? No. You can't. So we can't trust anything we read in the Quran, and yet we're supposed to trust everything it says about Jesus? Yes. This guy said, oh my goodness. How, how do you get it, Avery? How do you get it every step of the way? This guy can sit here. With his uh, with his Ramadan belly, shaking his Ramadan belly like Santa Claus, and just spout complete nonsense. There is nothing. I have not heard one statement from these guys yeah. that actually supports their case. Yeah. And what's he saying? He's just saying, "Hey." And by the way, look at he he gave you a glimpse of the underlying methodology. Anything that agrees with Islam, we'll say no problem. We agree with it. Anything that disagrees with Islam, we'll say no. That's that's garbage and man corrupted. Avery. Any person in the world can use that same methodology to prove anything. Yeah. Avery, could a Mormon, could a Mormon mm. say, I believe that Joseph Smith was prophesied in the Quran. Then, yes. go, then go to the Quran, cherry pick things that could be twisted into somehow supporting Joseph Smith, and then say everything is corrupted. Could a, could yeah. a Mormon do that? Yeah. They can even go to the Quran and so, say that Muhammad was a Mormon. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. So, so could could if if we wanted to prove that you're a prophet, could we do that by using this exact same method? Yes, of course. So, Muslims, my my to all my Muslim friends out there, I mean, dead serious here. The goal of having a good methodology is having a methodology that, if you apply the methodology correctly, it only gets you to the truth. It doesn't get you to a lie. 
the methodology is supposed to get you to the truth. If the methodology that you're using could get you to any false conclusion that you want, I mean, any false conclusion, any ridiculous, insanely stupid conclusion, I could use the exact same method that these Dawa guys are using. Namely, I go through, I'll cherry pick anything that agrees with me, say, see, this is the proof. Anything that disagrees with me, nope, that's changed, that's been corrupted, that's all lies. Mm -hmm. And we, we, we've already pointed out, we could use this methodology, which we did on my live stream the other day. We could use the exact same methodology to prove that Muhammad was a devout Trinitarian Christian and uh, his teachings were later corrupted by Uthman. We could do that. We could do it in a heartbeat. We could do it in a heartbeat. And have so fun. guys, if your methodology does not get you to the truth, instead, it's designed to be able to get you to any conclusion that you've decided ahead of time you want to get to, you need a new methodology. And I'll say it again. If I knew nothing else, Say before I was mentioning it like these Dawa clowns. If if all I knew about Islam was that it produces guys like this, then I would uh, that would be enough for me to think there's no oh, way yeah. this is the truth. If all I knew about your religion was that it produced a methodology that could get anyone to any conclusion they want, that would be enough for me to say there's no way that's the truth. There's no yeah. way the truth would have the worst possible methodology ever yeah. to as yeah. its primary defense. None. So okay. these guys are doing a great job exposing their religion. Got David out here spitting hot fire, man. Hot fire. That's what hot I do. Fire, man. My God. FM tells all of the information we know about him. That's all. And that's this our this is our primary source. So when we say we're Muslim, we're yeah. using our own primary source to, 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 to say this. Secondly, what is what the information that is written in your scripture, it affirms what we have. Do you understand so, these sorry, things? Sorry, because um, you know, I, I think you do understand. Are you, are you still there? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Because we we can't see you. That's why, because of the, oh, what the guy, the producers over there. So because the, the screen, the screen is we're, there. We're, we're looking at the camera. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Yeah, we can't, we can't see anything that you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> no worries. So, so, so basically, um, yeah, the, the point I was going to make is that. So, for example, from our perspective, yes, you're right. So, the wording mm -hmm. in the theology. So, it's not, it's, it's less the theology. It's the wording. So, for example, mm -hmm. for us, the father. I'm right. We don't believe one of yeah. Allah's names that we have been informed of is yeah do you understand wording in the theology so we can't see anything that you're doing yeah. <laughs> no worries. So, so so basically um yeah the, the point i was going to make is that so for example from our perspective yes you're right so the wording in the theology what we're so doing it's, here? Not, it's it's less the theology it's the wording so for example mm. for us the father we don't believe one of allah's names that we have been informed of is the father Right. We, say that's it. not one of the say names it. that we've been 99 on. names so we don't affirm right that. Say it. <laughs> However, we don't have <laughs> any other problem it. with the submission part of things, etc. Now, if a Muslim right. came or a Christian came and asked me, okay, so um, you don't have a problem with believing, and I feel like maybe this is what you're asking. You don't have a problem with believing that Jesus submitted, etc., but why do you have a problem with believing that he called him the Father? I would say because that's not fundamentally in line with our primary sources in Arabic. Right. Our yeah. It's not in line with the way in which we see it. And, yeah. and then if a person asks the question, okay, then why, why is this happening? I'd say, well, with the history of the New Testament, with the history of the Bible, mm -hmm. we find this. I mean, Bart Ehrman, in his book titled Misquoting Jesus, he brings passages like passages from Codex <coughs> Sinaiticus, yeah. one of the oldest <coughs> manuscripts of mm -hmm. the Bible, yeah. of the New Testament. Yeah. And literally passages where people have come, rubbed out a word, added a word, and then someone else has come, replaced the word, and said, yeah. fool and knave, don't change and, the scripture. And, and, and not only so that, by the way, just touch yo, on yo, the yo, one yo, point. Is yo, by the way, there's a reason you have that sort of thing, right? Mm. One, that's why you preserve manuscripts, because you can spot it. Two, you have the exact same thing in the manuscripts of the Quran. Mm-hmm. Go, just everyone, everyone go to uh, Dan Brubaker's channel, Variant Quran. Look through some of his videos. He's got one video where he shows 11 textual variants on one page of the Quran. It's very common to have erasure marks, uh, things written in, and so on. Why? You make, fact number one, it's very difficult to cover a massive book, to, to, to write a massive book by hand. Try doing it one time. Uh, a copy of the Torah, a copy of the Torah, when Jews used to copy the, Jews would copy the Torah by hand. I mean, they still do in certain places, but uh, when Jews used to copy the Torah by hand, it takes about a year to copy the Torah by hand, right? It's very difficult. So when you do it and then you spot, oopsie, here's a mistake or something like that. I made a, a, I made a mistake right here. What do you do? Do you stop and rewrite the entire thing? 
Hmm. Oh, you're gonna you're gonna okay. Let me erase that and then put in the problem. So he's what? Okay, multiple problems right here. I asked. <laughs> so you've pointed out. I asked Bart Ehrman. Hey, you, you you go to the who treats the Quran as a historical source on the life of Jesus? No one. Where do you go? We go to the Bible. Opposite of these guys. They're appealing to Bart Ehrman as if he's somehow supporting them. Bart Ehrman says the exact opposite of what they're saying. They right. say they go to the Quran to learn about Jesus as their source. Ehrman says no one does that. And yeah. so, but they brought they brought his name up. Why? What does Ehrman say? Well, he talks about textual variants and so on. Those exact same things you have in the manuscripts of the Quran. Yeah. So if it's a if it's a problem for us, how is it not a problem for you? The only yeah. reason it's not a problem for you is because you guys pretend this stuff doesn't exist. So if, if your entire methodology, if all your dawah is based on deception, exaggeration, right? Because if you're talking about textual variants, Ehrman, Ehrman, Ehrman would acknowledge. Ehrman would, a matter of fact, I asked him, I said, do you ever, all the variants, all the different variants anywhere, all the different manuscripts, you ever get to a Jesus who isn't, isn't the son of God? You ever get to a Jesus who didn't die on the cross and rise from the dead? He said, no. <laughs> you don't have anywhere the variants that these guys need. They need massive corruption of basic yeah. doctrine. Yeah. spelling differences, erasures, corrections, which happen in every book that anyone copies, mm. that is that doesn't get you what you need. So this is all, and they they know their followers don't know any of this. They know their followers are going, oh, Bart Ehrman, yeah, he says this. Bart Ehrman says this. So that he's he must be saying that, yeah, there are all these different Bibles and that some of them agree with the Quran and some don't. And that, yeah, and that, that's why we got to go to the Quran. It's so insanely like, guys, what what have they said that was not deceptive in some way? Right. What? How? So again, if this if this is what Dawah, if this is what Islam produces, guys who can only defend it through endless deception and hypocrisy. How how, how can we think this is true? How can we think for a second that the truth is producing this? Yeah. It's wild. <clears throat> it's funny, Musa here, he did a, 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 a kind of a review of our discussion too and said that I came quoting the Bible and saying, Jesus is not a Bible. Uh, uh, can you, can Wait, you show you me? That yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, you, shocker. Yeah, sure did. Can you show me that Jesus is a Muslim in the Bible type stuff? That that's, that's what I came pressing and that, that was wild. But let's see. Is that when he says a father, we believe, that let's suppose that Jesus actually done this. And he was like, for example, he submitted. And he says who? He said, my father. We know in that wording, he's talking about God, not his father. Just as, just as a way example I give about the sons uh -oh. of God. It does not mean the son, the begotten son. For example, there's a verse in the Bible that says, Jesus is the begotten son. And yeah. the Christians come and say, well, no, we don't mean begotten in that way. Oh, we mean it in this way. I mean, we have so, this in the Islamic tradition where, for exactly. example, we have statements of the companions saying, Kunu abna al akhirah be children of the akhirah of the yeah. that doesn't mean yeah your children of the afterlife right yeah. uh etc yeah, so does that make sense it doesn't mean your children it means be people of the afterlife. Yeah. Yeah, yeah like like i said i i understand that it's not in a literal sense right it's not yeah, yeah. Any, but it is with the with the quran it's not in any sense whether it's metaphorical a spiritual in no sense is it ever applied to Allah that he is a father at all in any way, shape, or form? This is this is my thing. You, so you you touched on something uh, important, um, my brother. I, I don't know your name. What's your, what's your name? The one sitting Musa, next to Musa, Musa. Say that again. Musa. 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 Nice yeah. to meet you. Moses. Uh, Moses. It's Arabic for Moses. Yeah, Moses. Yeah. Moses. Got it. Yeah, 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 yeah. For sure. So Musa, yeah. So you, you said something important that, you know, the the reason why we have in this room in this room we have yeah. Musa we have Dawood David, David. <laughs> and uh, you see uh, we have Muhammad we have yeah. we have you know good names yeah. we didn't have Isa yet but yeah. Yeah. we'll see yeah, yeah. Go go ahead. Go for it. yeah so so he said something that I that I liked that that is the point of why I'm bringing this this issue here is that you said yeah. yes in the in these New Testament passages that you guys are referring to you can yes. agree that you know, Jesus submitted and prostrated and things of this nature because those particular things line up with Islam. However, mm -hmm. when those verses, when those same verses also say that he's submitting to or prostrating to the father, you negate that part because it doesn't line up with Islam. And that's let's my let's point. Let's my, no, my, let's my, just, my point let's is, hold on, let me just, let, if I can no, complete this. Let's just that. Let's just that. No, you was quoting us. Let's just that. Wait, just let, let me let my point, please, if I can, brother. Yeah, yeah, there's two things. I just want to point in this. 
not just because they're not in line with the Quran. And as well, there are no historical evidences that he has said what he has said. Yeah. That's another problem. I mean, yeah, I mean. Okay, yeah. so let, all right. So regardless, if let's yeah. say, because like, you guys are saying that these things are now are unreliable. That's what you guys have been pushing for. I, 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 just, I just want to see where you're going with this. Yeah. Where yeah. Going with so this? so my, my thing is, is that, okay. Mm -hmm. So in these verses, yes, he submits. Yes, he prostrates and prays to the father, yeah. though. So yes. these that's the part that you have to take away because it doesn't agree with and line up with Islam, which is my point. If you go to the New yeah. yeah, so by the New Testament, if we just look at the New Testament for what it is, the Jesus that's portrayed in the New Testament, can we agree that that Jesus is not a Muslim based off those verses? That he's no, but no, uh, uh, okay. no, for example, see, the question no, is, listen, this, listen, the listen, question listen, is, listen, is listen. This. Ah. if in Islam, somebody, uh, Sheikh, if somebody. <laughs> Guys, <laughs> guys, very, very important. And notice, guys, this whole conversation unfolds from Ali Dawa himself saying, yeah. cool, and Jesus said, my father, my father, he said, my father, see, that's mm -hmm. he's talking about Allah there. Yes. Yeah, so this proved that and be a Muslim. Yeah. All right. This mm -hmm. all unfolds from this all unfolds from that. And so mm -hmm. ultimately leads up to, OK, Jesus, as he is, because now you guys. And you can see when this happens, when they eventually get to the point, which is inevitable, mm -hmm. where they have to say, nope, your Bible's been corrupted. Mm -hmm. They're saying that because you just said something that they know they cannot reconcile with mm -hmm. their Quran. And so it has to be corrupted. So we don't actually believe in your book. We don't actually believe in your book. And then so remember this follow-up. Remember this follow-up. Whenever they do that, and, and this could happen in a bunch of different ways. If you're quoting the Bible where Jesus says he's going to going up to Jerusalem to die that he's going to die and rise from the dead, or that uh, he he came to give his life as a ransom for many. Anytime you're quoting a passage where Jesus is the son or where he's going to die or something like that, they're going to have to say your Bible's been corrupted. At that moment, at that moment, do not, do not, do not let it go on for another two hours or something like that. Right there. Wait a minute. So can we say, can right. we say that the Jesus we read about in the New Testament that we have, that does not line up with Islam. Can we say that? That that Jesus that we read about in our Bible would not be a Muslim. Can we say that? Just keep in mind, that's, that's, the entire, that's the entire case that they want to keep spitting. That's exactly. the entire thing that they want to do. So what happened? He eventually got them to, you know, eventually, I don't know what they're going to say, but he, he's oh, yeah. asking exactly the right question. So, so now they're kind of in a little... Uh, so he, they kind of know he's still a Muslim, right? Uh, let's see if I can back this up a little bit. Based off those verses that he's no, but no, uh, okay. uh, no, no. For example, see, the question no, is this: listen, the listen, question listen, is, listen, is, listen, is listen, this. Listen. If in Islam, somebody, uh, Sheikh, if somebody believes in Allah, yeah, in every single attribute, but decides to call Allah Father, is he disbelieving in Allah? If he says, "I believe in Allah," yeah, everything is Tawheed, his oneness, Good his question. Nawas, I don't everything, know the answer. but I'm gonna call him Father. Does no. that commit shirk? Does it, does it no, become shirk? Is... So now he's appealing to the sheikh now. Now the sheikh has to answer this question. Watch what he says, David. Not the term that Allah Azul has used. Allah okay, he has it. But does it make him a no, commit shirk? Does it, does it no, become shirk? No, this is not the term that Allah Azul has used. Allah okay, he has it. But does it make him a non-Muslim? Wait, this, guy, this there... guy's talking to is a sheikh? That's that's what they say, yeah. This is, uh, wait, Ali Da was appealing to him as like the authority over yeah. him. That guy just said, everything I've heard from that guy is the stupidest stuff I've ever heard in my life. Yeah, he's a sheikh, man. So this is this is what Islamic scholarship does to you, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, he's a sheikh. And so when, now uh, Ali's question was pretty clear, right? If, uh -huh. if, if you believe in Allah in the every uh -huh. right way you're supposed to, but yep. the only thing you do now is that you just, you, you, you call Allah your father. Are you, is yeah. he committing shirk? Is he a disbeliever? And, and guys, so this is—I mm -hmm. I don't know what he's gonna. I—I I didn't catch his answer, but yeah, extremely important question here. Because if mm -hmm. you say, "Yeah, that's fine," as long as you believe in all of Allah, if you believe in Allah and all of Allah's attributes, and you do your five daily prayers, and you believe in all that, you believe what you're supposed to, and you you do everything right, except the the one addition of that you refer to Allah as Father. I guess he's saying, are you still a Muslim? And he, yeah. the guy had better say, the guy had better say yes, because if not, then it's indisputable. Jesus in the Bible who refers to God as father would not be a Muslim. Exactly. Exactly. So, so what he says is, is you, you can't really hear it, but what he says is Allah did not say that about himself. That's what he was. That's what he said. 
But Ali right. Gawa Jesus him. said it about him. Right. <laughs> Jesus said it about God. But Ali Dawa presses again because he didn't answer straight away. Okay, so so watch. I'm gonna call him father. Does no. that commit shirk? Does it, does it no, become shirk? this is not the term that Allah Azul has used. Allah okay, he has it. But does it make him a non-Muslim? One, one second, one second. But it's, very that's, okay. it's, in, it's innovation, wouldn't it be? Yeah, it's innovation. Yeah, but, but, innovation. Okay, it's innovation, innovation, but it does Whoa. not make me disbeliever. This, this, yeah, hold up, hold up, hold up. <laughs> Wait, what did he say? He said, it's innovation. Uh, he, uh -huh. hasn't, he hasn't given an answer quite yet. He's kind of still Guys, stammering and stuttering. Well, Muhammad said every innovator goes to hell. Mm. <laughs> the, the guy just said calling God Father would be innovation. Mm -hmm. So according according to uh, just according to what they're saying, uh, Jesus, the Jesus we read about in the Bible so far, just based on him not even finishing his answer, mm -hmm. but according to what he just said, he's the Sheikh. Who are we to question him? The Jesus that we read about in the New Testament is an innovator, and therefore, according to Muhammad, he's going to hell. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> but notice how this should have been a straight-up answer, shouldn't it have been? It should have been a straight-up answer, and it's, it's a struggle for them to answer this right here. And it wasn't me that asked this. It was Ali was like, let, let me ask the Sheikh. Let me get this answer so we can settle this. this. <laughs> you know what this reminds me of? It's a situation where... You've got a guy who doesn't know the answer, but he's in the presence of someone he thinks is going to give a powerful answer. Uh -huh. This reminds me exactly of when Muhammad Hijab, like everyone was finding out that that there were different Qurans in different parts of the world because Hatun mm -hmm. and Jay showed up at Speaker's Corner with a bunch of different, dozens of different Qurans, dozens of different Arabic Qurans. We're not talking yeah. about translations here. Yeah. Um, and so this like completely destroyed the Dawa claim that there's only one Quran. And then so Muhammad Hijab, he gets Sheikh Yasser Qadi, who literally wrote the book on sciences of the Quran. Because he thinks that this guy can clear things. He thinks, like just like Ali Dawa right here, oh, this is confusing to me, but I've got the shake here. The shake will be able to clear this up, yeah? <laughs> and and show us how even the Jesus in the gospel, him be, him be, him still be a Muslim, yeah? He thinks that's what he's gonna get. Hmm. Um, but he already got that the Jesus that we read about in the New Testament is an innovator, just like Muhammad Hijab got uh holes in the narrative, uh we got some problems here. No, mm -hmm. we don't just have one Quran. Give it up. Quit talking about it. Give it up. Tough. These guys are doing awesome work, man. Ali Dawa, Muhammad Ajab, these guys are doing awesome work yes, unraveling Christian. and destroying the Dawa of the previous generation. Can you imagine Ahmed Dida? Like, guys, I spent decades setting this stuff up. You this. destroy it all. You destroy it all. <laughs> oh, man. What, 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 I, what, what I wanted to say. That they used to, the Arabs used to say, even the Jews they used to say, call themselves Iyalullah. What does that mean? The children of God. Yeah. Oh, okay. Iyal, that means abna. And there is two terms. And, and unfortunately, English is poor language. So the Latin language, which is the translation of it, is poor language. But Hebrew and Arabic, they meet in certain things. Because Iyal means children and abna means children. But abna is about the children which is like what we use not in a metaphorical way which means a children or sons or etc but real means children of god means as a myth as in a metaphorical way you understand so these things have been used in the past so islam wanted to demolish this and after the prophet also was said never answered the question never answered the question and so ali dawa is still in wonderland like he's still wondering he didn't get the answer to his question but if you talk enough and you talk with enough confidence and you use the correct hand signs when you're talking as a as a shake and as a die then you sound like you have answered and gave a good response you if you use enough of your palms and your hands when you're speaking as a shake and a die preaching islam if you don't answer the question, but do all of these things when you're talking, it looks like you gave a very sufficient response. You know, that is exactly that is exactly more than more than any other rule of uh, understanding Dawa. It's that the the Dais and the Dawa fans regard any response, any words that are brought up. 
in response to a question they regard as a total refutation of the argument, no matter mm -hmm. if it, whether the words had anything to do or, or came within a million miles of addressing the topic. If you raised an objection and something came out of the sheikh's mouth in response, that is a decisive refutation. And if you don't think it is, you might be an apostate. So yep. be careful. Leave all of the, these traces in order not to misquote Allah in a way or another that includes as well to prostrating to an individuals. Because in the past, we know, for example, the brothers of Joseph, they prostrated to their brother. Uh, and it Bro, was something that was known about? that amongst the, you know, to prostrate to someone. Yeah, yeah. So when Islam came, when the, the Prophet ﷺ, he said that demolish these things, all things that could lead to shirk and associate with Allah, they cut them. So there is no way someone could prostrate to someone or to talk about God in a way that it could be, could be misquoted. So that's the thing which, which is established in Islam. And adding to you, because you mentioned earlier, because they're not in line with the Quran. Actually, they are not in line with the Old Testament. For example, the, all the things about Jesus, what you said, it's not in line with that. For example, the decree, yeah. the, 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 the creed of the Old Testament, is not in line with it. <coughs> Even though the Old Testament is not a resource for us, it's not something that the primary yeah. resource for they, us, but yet it's not good. in line with it. Adding mm -hmm. to this, that we don't have historical evidence. For example, when Jesus, for example, when he said, let it be not my will, when he was on the on, yeah, on crucifixion, the will of my father, yeah. uh, who said that? He has said this. Tell me the eyewitness that he had heard him who said, I heard Jesus when he was on the cross said that. No one knows. So it was something was later on caught and they said it was ascribed to him. <laughs> so the problem is, so since we don't have this, the middle, you know, uh, uh, father, father, why have you forsaken me, for example, huh? So this thing, who who caught him, who was there to hear him, he has said that. And then what you introduce in Christianity, you introduce a, a, a vague names like John, for example, who no one knows who's John. This person, they said, he receives, by the way, because even amongst Christian scholars, sure. they don't know even that, who's John, who's this. Yeah. And they say he has said that. How we know that he has said it? Who's John, yeah. firstly? And how, when he was, since John, he has the one who copied from Mark. Mark they didn't say what John has said. All of these things give you in a in a big problem actually to know, you know about the Bible yeah, yeah, to, to use it as a as a primary source. Yeah, for, Avery, for, I'm for, just gonna give you two minutes just to, for your thing because we need to run with the donations after Ramadan. You can call in again, but yeah, I'm gonna give you two minutes to just uh, answer. So I hope you have your thing. Sure. Thank, uh, yeah. Thanks, Ali. I appreciate it. So there, there was a lot said. John, John, uh, the apostle, and a couple of women were actually at the foot of the cross in within hearing distance of Jesus. So they could have definitely heard Jesus say what he said on the cross and continued the tradition. Um, you, you said that the the what we see uh, in the New Testament, the creed in the New Testament, doesn't match the old, but it but it does. When you go to the Torah in uh, Deuteronomy. Chapter 32, verse 6, Moses says that Yahweh is our father who created us. In Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 1, he says, God says, for talking to Israel, you are the children of the most high God. And so you, uh, Isaiah chapter 63, uh, Isaiah chapter 61, uh, God is the father. Malachi chapter 3, uh, God is the father. So all throughout the Old Testament, you see that God is seen as the heavenly father. That's how he introduces himself. That's what he's known as. And it continues throughout all the way up until Jesus' time where he acknowledges that God is the heavenly father and, to, and, and, and says, this is how you should pray. Father in heaven, holy is your name. So this is a consistency that we see with the prophets all the way up until Jesus. And then we see this disconnect with Islam where you know uh, god is not the father he's far above that that's blasphemous and so you shouldn't even think about it like the heavens the earth the, the mountains crumble and quake at the thought of allah being a father and having a son right you can only be a master he can only be your master and you a slave so i i and i just want to say thank you guys for letting me come on just to, just to land with this um because I, I will hopefully we could continue with the subject but yes yeah, if, if, the, if the new testament is unreliable which like if even if i granted this like because this is yeah. not that's not like a you know important to the subject the new testament was quoted to me for points that prove that jesus is a muslim so i'm just using those same verses that yeah. you guys quoted to show how actually it points that it shows that he's not a muslim that's that's that was my thing he, he would he will even if we went with your argument he will still be a muslim but because him 
saying that. But even if we went with the argument, we're saying we don't see your text as reliable. Uh, we don't see as an offer. We're saying if we was to base on your text, we will say that. And like, just to wrap on, wrap up on this. Yeah, I, I, wait, point. there's one question, Ali. I don't, I don't mean to cut you off. I'm so sorry. But I did want to ask you. I forgot to do this. So, yeah. so can you be a Muslim? Can you be a Muslim and say that Allah is your father and you're his son? Can you, you be a can, Muslim? But you can, but it'll be an innovation. No, no, it'll be an innovation. Like, it won't okay. take a photo of something. It'll be an innovation. It depends on what you mean. By exactly. No, no, what but you mean by that? No, okay. If they believe, you if they no, believe no, that Allah is... Like, <laughs> you're about to start beating, beating the crap out of each other. <laughs> a level of coherence. They're talk fearing each other right now. The no, there isn't. But the reality of the matter is even you in your theology... I'll, let me ask you a simple question. Those passages that you quoted that refer mm -hmm. to others as children yeah, so, of God, so, so, do you believe in innovation? Like, it won't okay. take out the thought of something, it'll be an innovation. It depends on what you mean. By exactly. No, no, what but. What you mean by that? No, okay. If they believe, you if they no, believe no, that no, Allah. I want is, to make something yeah. clear. There's something, there's an elephant in the room that we're missing. <laughs> Shut up, Ali. Because you just quoted to us verses from the Old Testament to show a level of coherency between the Old Testament and the New Testament. Oh, no, there isn't. But the reality of the matter is, even you in your theology, I'll, let me ask you a simple question. Those passages that you quoted. And the subject has changed. <laughs> and the subject has changed. So, I you mean, them, man. Uh, we didn't, I couldn't get a straight. Ali couldn't get a straight answer when he asked it. I couldn't really get a straight answer when I asked it. Um, they kind of kind of bickered a little bit over, you know, kind of discussed it like, you know, no, like, no. I mean, but yeah, but it depends on what you mean. Like, oh, but yeah, it depends on what you mean. But no, it. It's innovation. So so what is it, guys? And we never got that answer. Never got it. <laughs> yep. That that was a master class, man. Yeah. I mean, think about this. This is uh this is this is Avery. Pretty new, pretty new, pretty new uh, in the in the in the uh in the apologetics game. Mm. He takes on three guys, Ali Dawa, one of the most famous Dais on the planet. He's with a scholar and another Dai. Avery calls in, takes one thing that they said. <laughs> he takes one thing that Ali Dawa said. Yeah, Jesus said, my father. So you see him be a Muslim, yeah? <laughs> and notice it takes a while. It, it took a while. It took a while, but he still got he still got down to the point of this is not lining up. You, you, mm -hmm. What are you what are you doing? So Jesus is Jesus is guilty of innovation there. Yeah. And and keep in mind, Jesus, according to what they were saying, Jesus in the Bible, not only was an innovator, he taught and promoted innovation to his disciples, yeah. who, according to Islam, were devout Muslims. Were devout Muslims who Allah protected. So he led devout Muslims astray with innovation. And again, I remind you, Muhammad said, every innovator will go to hell. Yep. So that's, uh, wow. that's, that's where we're at, man. So... Uh, on a scale from one to ten, how well do you believe the the Dai team did in conveying a clear, concise, uh, understandable response to this "Is Jesus a Muslim?" Uh, for even Muslims watching that could give an answer when this is questioned to them. Scale from one to yeah, ten. Yeah, so there, yeah, there, there are a couple different ways. Um, that you can that you can look at that. So one for anyone who actually understands the issues that are being brought up, whether you're Christian or a Muslim, if you actually understand the the issues that were being brought up there, I would say they did they did a one. I mean, mm -hmm. it's a one. It's terrible. Um, if you were to ask their Muslim fans what kind of job they did, I don't I don't think that that anyone who's watching that would actually think they they knocked it out of the park or something like that. So I think they're fan, even they're like they're dumb fans because their fans are pretty dumb. I think they would think of it as like a five or a six because they don't understand what's going on. Mm. They're not hearing anything these guys are saying accurately. Accurately. Yeah. I mean, they, in other words, when these guys are when these guys are saying uh, things about the the textual variants and so on, th their fans don't know anything what they're talking about. And so they would, but they probably weren't comfortable with these guys getting confused about issues and stuff. So mm -hmm. I think fans in their minds would think, oh, these guys need to need to do a better job. They probably think in a, like a five or a six. But if you ask their fans, if you ask their fans, what kind of job did they do? They go, oh, Alhamdulillah, I was the most brilliant Dawah ever because they're just yeah. trained to do that. And dude, so, dude, yeah, there was that, a comment. There was a comment that said. Wow, I bet Avery regretted uh, showing up to Ali Dawa's stream now. 
One of my deep regrets. Yep. I was sleepless. Yep. And was- guys, ladies and gentlemen, this is how it worked. That's what you're actually up against. You're up against compulsive liars and deceivers mm. who have conditioned millions of followers to mindlessly agree and cheer for anything their Dawa guys say. Mm-hmm. That lo- It looks like it's insurmountable because you can sit there you, you, uh, like Avery did right in front of them, right? Take something that they said. Oh, Jesus said that, that God is his father, right? Take just that and use it to wreak havoc on their entire position, which is to show that Jesus is a Muslim. Yeah. You can do that. And yet their followers might not get it right then. The fans might not get it right then. Just like, just like if these guys were here, you know, if we were 10 years ago and these guys were saying, and what the, me, the miracle of the Quran has been perfectly preserved, dot for dot, letter for letter. And mm-hmm. you were to, if you were to call in and say, what about this passage here? What about that passage? What about this passage? And these guys would be giving really stupid responses. Uh, their fans, their fans would think, oh, wow, what brilliant responses, because they're trained to react like that. Mm-hmm. But so it, you it, you get this, uh, lots of people, like they just feel like it's a waste of time. These guys don't listen. And you can yeah. completely destroy a point. And they're, and they're, the people act like they don't, they, they didn't get the point. The stuff takes time. It takes time over and over and over again. Uh, it's like, uh, I, made this com- I made this comparison a while ago, but it's like if you're in a room that's 20 degrees and you have a, a, a clump of ice there, you can slowly start turning up the temperature. And that ice doesn't look like it's changing at all. And it doesn't change, right? In other words, you go from 20 degrees to 21 degrees. Ice hasn't changed. 21 to 22 degrees. Ice hasn't changed. 22 to 23 degrees. Ice hasn't changed. All of a sudden, you get to the room being 32 degrees and it's still warming up. Then you see massive change. Then you see massive change. That's exactly what it's like interacting with uh, with these these Dawa fans. You, yeah. you you point something out, you don't see a change in them. You see you point something out, you don't see it. Or you can think of it as their arguments, right? They got their argument. Perfect preservation right down the letter. And we point out, what are you talking about? Your sources talk about entire chapters come up coming up missing. No, 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 no. There's a reason for that. Uh, those are, That was all abrogated. Uh, perfect preservation right down to the letter. Uh, and you keep doing it. And you think you, year after year, you're doing it. And there, it just doesn't look like it's it's made a change. But changes are taking place. Everything yeah. is being built up for reaching that 32 degrees. And then all of a sudden melts and they stop using it. Yeah. And that, that's what you have to do with these Dawa fans. That's what you have to do with their arguments. It looks, it may look to you like you're, if you're talking to a Muslim, you got a Muslim friend from school or from work or something like that. You got a Muslim you've been communicating with you. Matter of fact, dude. I mean, I spent four years talking to Nabil. Mm. He looked like he was getting more devout the entire time because lots of them are trained to compensate. When you're having doubts in your mind, you can't let it out that you're having doubts and so on. So you compensate by acting even more, by acting even more devout. But I mean, think about how it's how it's looking to me. Gosh, the more arguments I destroy, the more evidence I give him, it looks like he's becoming more devout. And all of a sudden, boom, it just all of a sudden Islam just crumbled in his mind. And so, guys, just just don't don't look at the way people are actually acting or thumping their chest and stuff like that. (laughs) It really looks like you're not having an impact. Just keep being relentless. Just keep going out there, sharing the responses. Eventually, it all comes crumbling to the ground. And eventually we'll see all of Dawah itself come crumbling to the ground, can be relegated to the laughing stocks of history where it belongs. Yeah, I want to. There's something important that I want to point out too, because yes, the the argument is as easy that you can you can hand it to a eight year old and he can deliver these same questions and you know he can do the same thing. However, David, there is an element of like discipline that comes with this because you see all the rabbit trails they threw out. Is Jesus mm-hmm. God? Bible corruption. Uh, oh, Old Testament doesn't line up with New Testament. You know, all uh, Bart Ehrman, what they say, and, and church fathers, they disagree on canon. All of these different rabbit trails I could have addressed. I could yep. have abandoned my topic and addressed mm-hmm. and chased every little rabbit trail. But instead, I, I was focused on exactly what I wanted to talk about and, and got down to the nitty gritty to the point where I was, I was, I left satisfied with, what mm-hmm. happened here with them being confused on whether you could be a Muslim and still say Allah's father, where Ali Da was asking the sh- I was I left satisfied, but I, I w- we would not have been able to get there if I wasn't, you know, grounded on and, and focused tunnel visioned on my mission and my point that I wanted to raise. So I would say that discipline is a large 
part of like keeping your composure and, and keeping, you know, your head in these type of situations so that you're not distracted. Cause man, it's easy for anybody to get distracted in a situation like that. Right? Yeah. And that's what they do. That, that's, I mean, that's one of their main jobs is to distract people from ever getting to the real point. Right. And it's uh, and you can, you can tell because they're always like this, right. They'll bring up some point. You start responding to the point. As soon as they see, you know what you're talking about, they, they start deflecting to it. They, they want, they want to take you down rabbit trails. And one of the difficult things is you could have Christians who watch that. What? Why didn't he defend the deity of Christ? Why didn't he? Oh, man, they brought up an objection to the deity of Christ. Why didn't Avery respond? Because they were bringing up a, the deity of Christ as a distraction to, exactly. to so that they wouldn't have to defend their point. That's what, when they're talking about the canon, when they're talking about all this stuff, all of that was a deflection. All mm -hmm. of that was a massive deflection from the core fact that Avery came there to address, which was, you guys claim that Jesus is a Muslim according to the, according to the New Testament. I'm saying he's not. And so show us, show us where, show us how you would conclude from the New Testament that Jesus was a Muslim. Ali Dawah tried, and eventually they end up with Jesus being, a, the Jesus of the Bible being, uh, at the very least, a massive, uh, the greatest proponent of innovation yes. and shirk of all time, yes. right? Yeah. And so that's what, and notice guys, if Avery had gone with any of their diversions, instead of just saying, okay, well, maybe we'll grant that. Maybe we'll, okay, grant that, grant that. If mm -hmm. he had gone down any rabbit trail, never would have got to that. Never. Which is exactly what they wanted. And every Muslim would have walked out of there thinking, yeah, even Jesus of the New Testament is a, is a devout Muslim. Mm -hmm. And so, guys, uh, the, the, the over if you're getting into a discussion, you know a discussion, think, decide ahead of time, this is the point I want to get. This is the point I want to make. Yeah. Do not let them veer. Do not let them get you off the track of that point. Um, yeah. Say, uh, okay, okay, yeah, that, that you, you, hey, what you're talking about would be a, a, a good discussion. That's irrelevant to what I'm saying. And that's that's kind of what Avery kept doing. Okay, you're talking about, you're challenging the deity of Christ. That's kind of irrelevant because we're talking about whether he's a Muslim according to the New Testament. Mm -hmm. um, and exactly. any of these other issues, any of these other issues. So, yep, uh, again, it is, it is a problem because there will be Christians who, up oh, if you don't respond to every objection, they think, uh, you know, you didn't, you didn't, uh, you should have defended any, any one of those. Guys, if Avery hadn't stuck to the point they would have they would have sent him on a rabbit trail the first thing and they would have been on that rabbit trail the entire thing and they would have ended off ended the entire discussion down a rabbit trail exactly exactly so we got a, uh, about 10 more minutes until it's about eight o'clock your time uh did you did you want to maybe bring up a few people just to see if they agreed with uh Ali Dawa and, and the Sheikh or Oh, sure. Right. Yeah, I got to be off in about 10 minutes. Uh, mm -hmm. My wife is out and I'm with my son. And so I have to get him ready for bed and stuff like that. But yeah, Any, right, anything right. you want. You got, me, you got me for about 10 minutes. So. Got you for 10 minutes. So look, we got David Wood for 10 minutes. If you're a Muslim and Muslims only, please. If you're Muslim, go ahead. Here's the link right here. Come on up. And it's just really quick. We don't really want you want to debate. We just want a quick little answer here. Uh, can you be a Muslim while still addressing Allah as your father. Can you address Allah as your father and still be a Muslim? So this is what we want to know. Um, <clears throat> is it simply just innovation? Can you be an innovator and still be considered yourself a Muslim, a true believer and submitter? That's what we want to know. Okay. So we got a few more minutes for you guys to come on out and, uh, and, and let us know what it is or what it ain't. Don't be shy. I don't bite, neither does Dizzle. Uh, you know what I'm saying? But okay, so but yeah, so the 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 shake guy, that dude, I don't think there was one time in that entire time, that entire discussion, where he answered a question uh directly, where he answered a question at all. He literally didn't answer um didn't answer Ali Dawa. Uh, I said that this is for the Muslims, guys. Sarah, this was for the Muslims. We don't, this is, that's it. So no Christians. I thought I was pretty clear with that. So here's the link, ladies and gentlemen. I got David hey, Wood. Keep in, mind, yeah, keep, keep in mind how, I mean, being really generous here, right? You call mm -hmm. up a situation where it's three on one. Mm -hmm. You've got one of the most popular Dawah guys in history, Ali Dawah, right there. And he's got he's got people to back him up. He's got a shake to back him up. Mm -hmm. You completely cook them. We go through the clip, point out some of the uh, some of their shortcomings. They don't know what they're talking about. They're evading. They're deceiving. They're they're completely misrepresenting things, which is what which is what every Dawa guy does. 
we know there are Muslims watching. And then you say, any Muslims want to jump in? Any Muslims want to jump in and 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 do a better job? Yeah, exactly. Like how, how how much more generous can you be with your time here? Yeah. All right, Ishmael, you a Muslim? Uh, yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you just fine. So I'm we'll just ask you a simple question because we only got a few minutes, my friend. Can, uh, you be, can you be a Muslim and say that Allah is your father? No. Okay, so so when Ali Dawa said that that doesn't take you out of Islam, you would disagree and say that, yes, that does take you out of Islam? As a Muslim, you can't address Allah as your father. Mm. That is that is wrong. That is wrong. I appreciate your honesty, man. Yeah, I feel like I, we was asking a simple question. David, you want to say something? Yeah. So, w would you agree? Because I mean, this is how I would view it, Ishmael. I, I would I would view it as, okay, if Jesus in the New Testament is addressing is addressing God as his own Father, he's saying, "My Father." Then, as a Muslim, I would, I would believe, I would have to believe that Jesus never said that; that that has been changed. But that would mean that would mean that I would have to say that Jesus, as we read about him in the New Testament, could not be considered a Muslim. And so I just have to say, yes, according to the New Testament, yeah, that Jesus, that's not a Muslim. But that's not what we believe about Jesus. We believe about the Jesus that we read about in the Quran. But the only the only underlying point there would be that it, there's something disingenuous about Muslims who claim that G, the Jesus of the New Testament is a, is a Muslim. That, that, would be, that would be my view if I were a Muslim looking at this. Is, is that, uh, how do you see it? Uh, so I don't, I don't really know. Okay, let me put it this way. I read, the, I read the Bible. I read the Quran. It's very clear that the way Jesus is portrayed in the Bible is, should I say, it conflicts a lot with how it's portrayed in, in the Quran. Right, so we have it's like we have two different Jesuses, right? Yeah. With the way with the things I agree. I agree. he's meant to say in the Bible and the things he's meant to say in the Quran. So what I think should be done is which one of these two books and I know I know like I, I was listening to you guys earlier and you guys were saying something about deflection and whatnot. I promise you it's not a deflection, it's just me saying maybe on your next live stream, it's something you guys should talk about. Is okay, which of these two books can we hold as how do I put it? As as you know, trust as trustworthy. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I agree. I agree so with you. If we can if we can get past that, if we can get past the idea that oh the Quran is is right with how it portrays Jesus as opposed to as opposed to how the Bible portrays Jesus, then we can say, okay, well, whatever Jesus said in the New Testament should not be taken as what well, as evidence or as facts. On the other hand, if we can prove the New Testament is right, is you know the true what the true word of God, mm -hmm. and you get what I'm saying, then we can yeah. say okay, whatever Jesus said in the Bible or whatever Jesus is portrayed as in the Bible is wrong. So I think that's okay. what should be done. I'm, I'm, we, I, you say you have about what five minutes now, so I don't think you want to get yeah, into yeah. that. But I'm yeah, just we, saying we I think if it comes now. online, if it comes online Mondays, Wednesday, or Friday, because I've been following you. Actually, I started following you. Yeah, you got a schedule. Friday. <laughs> yeah, I was trying to I was trying to get I was trying to get on last week, but he kept putting me backstage. He kept putting me backstage. I was trying to get on. He kept putting oh. me backstage. Okay. I'll probably yeah. I'll, I'll try tomorrow. I'll try tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Try, you try tomorrow and, and, and I know who you are now, so I'll make sure I'll, I'll Yeah, try what to time do you come online? Because the thing is I it I think I always come online late. So what time do you what time do you come online? It'll be it'll be around uh, well it's five five p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's when I'll be live tomorrow. Okay, Eastern. Okay, okay. I, I'll try to be early tomorrow because it's like I always come online late. I was listening to you yesterday talking to what the the lady that said her name was Yaz something. I was so yeah, annoyed yeah, with the way that, she was like she was spewing well. nonsense. She was just talking. <laughs> I was like, just get this lady off. This girl, she's not talking Islam. She's talking something else. Yeah. So that's why you know I do I do watch you. I do watch you. Okay. Well, yeah, hey, you know, I, like, I appreciate you. Uh, I appreciate you coming up and being honest, man. But that's what we can appreciate all the time. Uh, so yeah, tomorrow, uh, Lord willing, come come through and uh, we'll we'll talk, man. We'll, Five we'll p.m. Get... Eastern Standard Time. I, I I'll try to be there. I'll try to be there. Yeah, and let uh, me let me just let let me just say, Ismail, uh, what you what you just said is pretty much my exact thinking. It's yeah, I I read about Jesus in the Quran. I read about Jesus in the Bible. They do not match up, and so the real question is, which of these should we trust? Because they exactly, because yeah. because they can't they can't both be right. In fact, if the, the Dawah, yeah, if yeah. yeah, if the if the Dawah guys that uh, God Logic was talking to, if they'd said that, 
that would have been fine. But you keep getting this Dawa approach of no, the Bible agrees with the Bible agrees with uh, that that Jesus is a Muslim, and then so you you have you know Avery pointing out, hey, I mean, no, thing, what about this? What about is, this? The thing with the, the thing, I think the thing Ali Dawa is trying to is trying to you know point out is the fact that the Bible doesn't completely portray Jesus as God. So there's a chance that it can be Muslim according to what the old, the New Testament is saying. But here's the thing. You, uh, he doesn't believe in the Old Testament. So him trying to use the Old Testament as what as proof or something, it's, it's, it's actually not working for him. If you understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so no, I just, are, I just, yeah, no, I just, I just, I just, want, of, I just want to say, I just want to say that, of, I just yeah. wanted to point out that when we, when we, because uh, I have to go here in a second, but, when we, I mean, I understand that that what he's doing can be popular with his fans and so on, but uh, for for the for the rest of us, for for like Christians, when we hear a Dawa guy saying that you know the Jesus that we read about in the New Testament is uh, is uh, is is a Muslim, or like like Zakir Naik used to argue that according to the New Testament, Jesus actually survived crucifixion and so on, that may work with those with those fans. But to those of the rest of us who are who are listening, it comes across as deceptive. We think these guys can't be trusted. Yeah. And so when some when someone comes along and says, "Yes, of course our books disagree, and we should be examining, we should be examining which which is is better and more reliable," that sounds like someone I could trust, as opposed to some guy who's saying, "No, the Bible doesn't say things that it it obviously says." So, uh, so yeah, yeah, I'd like to hear, yeah, uh, yeah, you you'd be good for interacting with Avery. We already just just hearing you for just a couple minutes, you you already sound like someone we trust way more than uh, than than some of the Donald guys. Yep. All right, man. So this was an awesome streak. All right, we'll see you tomorrow, Ishmael, Lord willing. Thanks for coming through. Going to get ready to close this out, man. David, thank you so much for popping in, man, and gracing the channel, man, with the Dizzle Riz, man. You saw what we had to go through with the Dawa Squad. So if there is anything that you want to say last before, you know, go ahead and go ahead and say it so we can go ahead and close. Oh, it. I was just going to say, maybe we should do it like once a month where we do a crossover, like uh, one week a month or uh, you jump on my channel, I jump on your channel, we uh, discuss some of the things, you know what I mean? I would love that, bro. I would absolutely yeah, be pretty good. Be pretty that. good. For sure. Some, All right, some guys. Of us, some of us are getting some of us are getting old. Some of us are getting old. So we we're happy that we see the uh we see the young guys coming in. Give me up. everything you got, man. I'm trying to get everything out of you. You, Sam, whoever it is. It I want give me it all, man. Give give mm -hmm. it. I'm gonna try to put it in a nice, perfect little package, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, thank you, man. It's been a blessing. So yeah, definitely right, I'm man. down. Uh so gotta let you go. Don't want to hold you. Thank yep. you guys for showing up. Hit the like button. Make sure you subscribe. Subscribe to uh, Apologetic Roadshow if you haven't already. I'm pretty sure you guys all have already. But yeah, Apologetic Roadshow. That's David Wood's channel. And uh, we got to let this man go, all right? So you guys be blessed. We'll see you guys next time. Peace.